The Georgia Dome in Atlanta prepares to host history. For the first time ever, the Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam will be televised live on speed, and the biggest superstars in the sport are ready. Anytime you walk into a field with 14 trucks, you know there's just more and more rounds where you got to be on your game. I want to beat Dennis, I want to beat Tom, I want to beat everybody out there. I feel that 2010 is my year and, and I'm here to dominate. It's so cool to be back here with Dennis Anderson in this building. We're going to make it a night to remember. It makes no difference tonight, 14 trucks, Tom Mintz, whatever. I'm here to double down, I'm here to take all this steel out of here, I'm here to win tonight in the Georgia Dome. It has become one of the biggest annual sporting events in the South. The return of the Monsters to Dixie. The Georgia Dome is sold out. Over 65,000 fans are packing in. And for the first time ever, you are going to experience it live right here on Speed. Hi again, everyone. I'm Scott Douglas. Welcome to the fabulous Georgia Dome as we get ready to start 2010 off on speed. Bigger and better than ever before. It's going to be a huge live year of action here on speed. And what a way to start it. We're going absolutely huge tonight. Six and a half hours of live coverage. Now, we begin with three hours of action from here in the Georgia Dome. You're going to see all the racing and all the advanced, uh, advanced auto parts, Monster Jam freestyles. They're all coming up here on speed. We figure that's going to end about 10 o'clock or so. Then we're heading out west. It's round one of the Monster Energy AMA Supercross, and that'll be coming your way live from sunny Southern California. And that is where, standing by to give us a preview of all the action, here's Ralph Shaheed. Hi guys, it is a beautiful day out here in Southern California. Practice is underway. The fans are having a great time down here in the pit party. They're rocking the pit party, having a big time here at Angel Stadium. My colleagues Aaron Bates and Jeff Emig in the middle of an autograph session. Practice going just as you would expect it to be. James Stewart and Chad Reed on the top of the boards. They're very fast. Ryan Villapoto right there with them. Don't forget, it's all coming up right after Monster Jam, live here on Speed, Anaheim 1, coming your way. It has been an amazing process over the last few days converting this home of the Atlanta Falcons into an advanced auto parts monster jam course. And you can see how that all came about until this afternoon. More than 10,000 fans were actually on this floor for the Built for Tough party in the pits. We are up here in this great location to watch all the action. I say we. I'm thrilled to be joined in the broadcast booth once again by Ken Stout. Ken. This is just history for Monster Jam, and everybody is just fired up, and I know you're jacked. Yeah, this place is electrifying. You can tell all the people are in here, they realize what's happening. More importantly, how about these drivers? They want to come out here and win this event. This definitely has a world championship feel to it. One of the reasons we're here in Atlanta, I got to tell you, these are some of the wildest fans in Monster Jam. You're going to see the signs. They're going to be screaming and carrying on all night long. It's going to be a party, and we're going to be right in the middle of it. Yeah, not only that, I mean, this place is really great for racing because it will throw these guys some curveballs. We've had some first-time winners in here, so who knows? Maybe the two big dogs that are in the house, by the way, could be upset here tonight. You mentioned the big dogs. It's a star-studded lineup, but it begins with the biggest guns in the game. That's right. The biggest rivalry in motorsports will be renewed. Brave Digger, Dennis Anderson, Max D, Tom Metz will go in-depth behind the rivalry when we come back live to Atlanta. Speed's coverage of Monster Jam Live from Atlanta, brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. Keep the wheels turning. By Ford, the Ford F-150, built Ford Tough. And by Magnaflow Exhaust Products, quality, power, sound. We welcome you back to this night of history for the first time on Speed, the Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam Series, and we have a star-studded lineup. We're going to look at the field of trucks, but we're going to start with the two guys that so many fans are here to see tonight. We're talking about the icon entering his 28th year driving the Gravedigger. Three-time world champion Dennis Anderson brings the black and green wrecking machine back to take on his arch rival, Monster Jam's only eight-time world champion, Tom Metz is back in maximum destruction. Now, Monster Jam has been coming to this building now for 18 consecutive years, so we're going to talk about a lot of history tonight. 
Let's take 2004 as an example. That year in freestyle, Tom Mintz won it with a score of 30. Dennis Anderson was second with a 29. And finishing third with a 28 was a truck called Devastator. The driver, Mark Schrader. And that is our expert down on the track right now. Mark, welcome to live Monster Jam coverage. Thank you so much, Scott. What an exciting night. I am standing here with two men that really do not need any introduction whatsoever. Eight-time world champion Tom Mintz in maximum destruction and Dennis Anderson in Grave Digger, the icon, the man himself, who doubled down here in 2009. Now, I'm going to stir up the pot just one little bit, Tom. It has been two years since two gentlemen have been here together in Atlanta. What is it that you have to do in maximum destruction to redeem yourself to these Atlanta fans? Absolutely, man. I'm so excited to be back. The rivalry, the greatest rivalry in motorsports, starts a new chapter tonight. We're going to be live on Speed Channel. Dennis Anderson versus Tom Mintz. All the Monster Jam fans out there, so excited to be back in Atlanta. I can't wait to get in that truck. You can really feel the excitement, obviously. Dennis Anderson, this is a challenge. He's, he's laying down the gauntlet here for you now. I don't see any fear in your eyes. It's not, man. You know, I'll get out here, and it's just, it is what it is. I'm here. I'm going to be first man on deck tonight. You know, I did double down here last year. I would love to double down live just because this is history, man. This is history right here, Monster Jam Live, and I'm a part of it. And I'm an, it's an honor to be here, and I love it. I just don't know, man. We, may the best man win, all I can say is. Tom is good, but we got a lot of other good guys out here, too. Got a big field of trucks. But I'm going to tell you right now, this old man ain't cut nobody no slack. Absolutely. You heard it here. These guys are jacked. We're ready to go. It's an exciting night. Scott and Ken, back to you. Everybody is amped about those two, and they have, of course, made such history in this sport. And let's take a look at the tail of the tape, Ken, the two greats in the business. Yeah, of course, we heard that mentioned before. Eight world championships with Tom Mintz. Dennis Anderson, of course, he's a guy that's really made his name in freestyle all along throughout his career. A number of championships along the way to go with it. But it's not just these two guys, as Dennis mentioned. There's some big-time players here tonight. Now, we know we have so many hardcore Monster Jam fans with us, but also new advanced auto parts Monster Jam fans want to make sure they're aware the big trophy, the double down trophy, is what they all want. You can only win it by taking racing and freestyle here tonight in Atlanta. The pursuit for those trophies is not very far away. You're going to see it live on speed. Welcome back to beautiful Atlanta. I can't say warm Atlanta, it's chilly outside, but the action red hot here as we go live for the first time on speed with Monster Jam coverage. Ken, let's look at more of our field of trucks. How about a second generation racer? Of course, son of Dennis Anderson. This is Adam Anderson. He'll be campaigning Taz. He's also the youngest ever world champ. Chad Fortune is driving Superman. He's been in this building one other time in his career, and he finished in the number two spot in racing. John Seesock won here back in 2007 and went on to win the championship that year. He'd love to do it again. Lindsey Wink is behind the wheel of the built Ford Tough Blue Thunder. Make no mistake about it. This team and this driver love the big stage. They love the spotlight and they want to win here. Atlanta's a fun place to be. I like being here. Uh, we were here last year, did well uh, in freestyle. We kind of had a tough time racing, so I'm kind of here to redeem myself. Anytime you walk into a field with 14 trucks, you know there's just more and more rounds where you got to be on your game. And that takes a lot more mental preparation and just a lot more finishing every race confidently so you can run into your next one with, uh, with confidence and speed. Everyone wants to be the winner of this show because it's a pretty big deal. So it's, there's a lot of pressure there, and, and there's no better place to win. If I can get forward in the final and win it there, that, that'd be a great uh, start to the season. The superstars just keep on coming. Let's look at more. Leo Donnell, who won this event in 2008 behind the wheel of Blue Thunder, will be here for the first time ever in Iron Man. He'd love to do the same. And Travis Pastrana's Nitro Circus with his buddy Cam McQueen behind the wheel. He'll be flying high. Watch out for him, especially in freestyle. How about Alex Blackwell, runner up to Tom Mintz, the World Championships, still looking for his first when he's hoping he'll find it here in Atlanta. There may be no happier driver in the business today than Lupe Sosa. One of the sports greats, a former world champion, has been tapped to drive the brand new Advance Auto Parts Grinder, and he is proud to be a part of the advanced team. Well, Advance Auto Parts wanted their own team. They stepped it up and formed a team, and uh, they have a fine ride. They just needed a driver. Uh, my name came up and I said, you're, you know, I'm your guy. Well, pulled me out of El Toro Loco and next thing you know, I'm wearing 
grinder apparel now. I'm an everyday hero, just like each and every other fan that comes to Monster Jam is an everyday hero. And I just want everybody to understand that this is not my truck, it's not about Lupe Souza, it's about all the people out there. You know, this is the people's truck. This is the everyday hero truck. There's a lot of pressure on me here. You know, this is a surface, a clay surface, Georgia clay that I've never been on before. It's a big floor. I'm at home in big floors, you know, so I, that, that doesn't worry me. You know, the, the bigger the better. You know, the obstacles as well, I really don't care. We've got a really nice uh, shock set up on our truck, this, uh, you know, coming into Atlanta. If I take a bad bounce and there's something in front of me, well, then I'll, I'll put my right foot into it according to the size of the ramp or the size of the obstacle. So, uh, you know, it's anybody's guess what's gonna happen when I come out there. And we're not done, there's more. Let's look at the rest of the field. Yeah, how about Randy Moore's 41 Willys? It's called the War Wizard. It is beautiful and also has 1,800 horsepower ready to help that thing fly. Scott Hartsock has had a lot of success in the Georgia Dome. He is back with a brand new, beautiful piece. The Gunslinger is in the house. And Paul Cohen, great to have him back behind the wheel. After he broke his back in 2005, he makes his official return to competition. The leader of the Mohawk Warriors is back in Atlanta. That's right, George Bellhan in that big black Escalade. He finished second in freestyle here a year ago. He wants to take it one more step up. I love racing. I wanted racing, but I was, I was born to do freestyle. I got the crazy hair, the crazy tattoos, and... You know, I'm not a conformist. Racing has rules. Freestyle doesn't. So I, I want to do good in racing, but I want to get to those huge obstacles out there in, re in freestyle. It doesn't matter if Dennis is here, Tom's here. I, I don't care. I, I got to drive my hardest and drive my best. And at the end, if I'm holding up that, that trophy, and in fact, I want to hold, hold the double down trophy at the end of tonight. I want to win racing and freestyle. You know, I feel that 2010 is my year, and, and I'm here to dominate. New trucks and established legends. Not only that, we're talking about superstar drivers and rising stars. They're all here looking to win live. And the action is coming up just ahead on Speed. We didn't forget to pay the electric bill. You're back looking at the Georgia Dome Live. This is the start of the opening ceremonies. Welcome back to Atlanta. I'm Scott Douglas, Ken Stout, Mark Schrader, bringing you all the action of Monster Jam Live. And you know, one of the great things about being at Monster Jam is, yes, the goosebumps. I got them, baby. All the excitement <laughs> of the festivities, like the opening ceremonies. So we want to take you down to the floor. We're going to take you right in the middle of the introductions of the trucks as they come out for the first time in front of this sold-out crowd. Let's get down to the floor and be a part of the gala that is Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam. can see the superstars are out and the fans are loving it. Monster Jam is live and you are a part of history here on Speed. We're going to turn the lights back up. We fire them up, and we start the process by qualifying the superstar lineup of 14 of the greatest advanced auto parts monster jam trucks in the sport. It comes your way live next on Speed.
Barrett Jackson, the world's greatest collector car event, returns to speed in January live. See the most treasured rolling sculptures all in one place and all up for sale. This is where dreams end and passion takes over. Live coverage of the Barrett Jackson auction begins January 19th exclusively on speed. We are back live here at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Ken Stout, we have great looks for our fans. Yeah, we're going to show them some good looks of the suspension. You can see that on Escalade Blue Thunder. But take a look at the Gravedigger on board. It actually pans, so we're going to get some great views out of that. Of course, one looking right at Tom Mintz on Maximum Destruction. We'll have one on Grinder and Taz. So we will be busy here tonight. We'll get you as close to the action as absolutely possible. Now, Ken, as we talked about, we know we've got a lot of new fans tuning in in tonight so let's get basic for a moment what is a monster jam truck yeah take a look at these things i mean they're 11 feet tall about 12 feet wide very tall tires 66 inches they weigh a minimum of 9,500 pounds most of them over two i'm sorry 10,000 pounds and anywhere between 1500 to 2000 horsepower these things are purpose built machines they are absolute racing vehicles tonight's advanced auto parts monster jam event will consist of two separate competitions the first is the racing competition Competition, later the freestyle competition now racing is done bracket style but to get to the point of who races whom we qualify so you have the chance to earn your spot they've drawn blindly for their qualifying positions you can see Escalade and Gravedigger will come out first what's interesting to note is that they qualify two at a time Ken however they're not racing each other they are racing the clock and there's how they'll come out in those pairs all 14 trucks will qualify and then they'll seed them so the fastest qualifier, number one, will go up against number 14. Number two would take on number 13, just like you do drag racing or an NCAA bracket. Let's head it down trackside to our colleague, Mark Schrader. Right here, we're standing at the starting line. You can see Escalade in my background. What's going to make or break these races this weekend here in Atlanta is this track. This is called Atlanta Clay. Very, very tacky dirt. You can see this. It's going to hook very, very hard at the starting line. It's going to hook very hard in the turns. They've added some dirt, some, some light sand to the track in the corners to get these trucks around the track better. But I tell you what, this is going to be an awesome night here in Atlanta. We're ready to go green. They often talk about the Georgia clay when we come to the Georgia Dome. And right off the bat in qualifying, we're going to look at two big guns. George Bell had in that Escalade out of Chicago, Illinois. We talked about it earlier, the leader of the Mohawk Nation. And in the other lane, there he is, the icon. Starting his 28th year as the driver of Gravedigger. We're qualifying in Atlanta. across the cars to complete one lap and these trucks are going to be very very close to their time here they come around Digger will have the better of it by about a truck length but again it's just in time that's not racing so we'll get the qualifying times Dennis Anderson with the better of the pair between himself and George Bellhand and Escalade that was a great onboard shot right there of Dennis as well. One of the big advancements in these trucks in the past year is the full containment seat. We saw the ISP seat that Dennis Anderson strapped into. It really contains these guys a lot better. They're able to keep better control over their body. Therefore, they keep better control over the truck. Our next pair will pull to the line now. As you mentioned, that great shot on board with Dennis. We're going to get some great looks. By the way, those are just some of the ones. We've got 17 cameras covering tonight's Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam event. It's the greatest coverage ever. We're proud you're joining us for it here on Speed. Now, there's Superman, Chad Fortune, veteran driver. Interesting to note, as long as Chad's been at this game, he's only appeared in this building once before, but when he did, he made it all the way to the championship race in 2005, where he lost to Alan Pizzo and Predator. So Superman will go in the one lane, in the other lane. Scott Hartsock and Gunslinger. Now, here's an interesting fact for you. Hart Hartsock may not want the number one seed. In the last five years, twice he's qualified number one. Both of those times, Tom Mentz dropped out, was seated last, and beat him in round one. So maybe Hartsock's not looking for number one. Yes. Yeah,
Both trucks explode off the line, trying to get through the turns. Now, in recent years, we've gone away from turning poles, using turning cars, and it seems like right now everybody's kind of feathering their way through the turns to get a feel for it. Hartsock puts down the better of the laps as Chad Fortune goes off course and actually shuts down, running into one of the turning cars. Yeah, it looks like Chad broke there in the middle of that turn, really came to a to a halt and just basically slowed down. Looks like he does have it fired up right here and moving one more time. One thing I did notice, though, it looks like the track is actually a little looser than I would have anticipated. You see these guys, actually Scott got a little loose, but now Scott has a full buff tire. In other words, he has very little lug on that tire. Take a look at it once again. Let's see what we can find out with Superman here. Well, it just kind of turns in. I mean, very strange. It's almost like he lost control of the steering of that truck, and he finally had to come to a stop. Now here's Hartsock, who, as we mentioned, tends to qualify very well in this building, and he had another outstanding run there. So Scott Hartsock and Gunslinger, the better of that pair. As we come back to the line, there is Alex Blackwell and Captain's Curse, without question, one of the fastest rising stars in advanced auto parts monster jam racing. The native of Frackville, Pennsylvania. You know, this is a great story. Here's a kid who just wanted to be in monster jam, worked his way up, got his first ride with Andy Slifko and the Eradicator team. That got him going then he worked for randy brown motorsports and finally now has a high profile riding captain's curse and in the other lane there is the youngest world champion in monster jam history adam anderson the 2008 world freestyle champion behind the wheel of taz yes he is dennis anderson's son but there's no question that adam anderson has made a huge name for himself in a very short period of time yeah and he has a new crew chief cole bernard and he's very happy about it. he's a good close friend they have great with our Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam Jam Camp. To the finish. Slightly better time for Taz. So Adam Anderson with a slightly better time. Look. Go ahead and rev that baby up one more time as he comes around. Great onboard shot right there. Beautiful look down at the bottom side of the truck there, just across what looks like probably the sway bar. And no, again, I think we have to talk about tire choice out here. There's a lot of different combinations. You can have a big lug. You can have a buff tire. So there's a lot of options out here on this play. We are just getting started with qualifying. We're going to get back to the action when we return to Atlanta. Don't go away. Qualifying action continuing from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta on this historic first night live coverage of the advanced auto parts monster jam series on speed there is another piece of history brand new piece and isn't this beautiful leo donald who for the past few years has been the sports hired gun now has himself one sweet ride he will drive the new iron man truck and in the other lane to qualify randy moore and the war wizard busy week for the war wizard randy wanted to run last week to get ready for the show. He went to Montgomery, Alabama, blew an engine there, but he's back together and ready to go. War Wizard and Iron Man as qualifying continues from the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Little bit better start for O'Donnell. And Iron Man will come across heading for that final turn with what appears to be a significantly better run. But look at Randy Moore close. You talked about that horsepower, Ken, earlier, and Moore almost goes off course. He gets it stopped down. But you talked about that 1,800 horsepower. He used every bit of it at the end of that run. 572 cubic inches of Keith Black power inside of that truck right there. And he stood on the throttle hard coming out of that final turn. Kicked him off of that stack a little sideways, so he had to get it gathered back up. But a beautiful truck, extremely powerful. We'll have another look at this as well. Of course, in the meantime, Leo Donald was having a great run as well. But there's what you see whenever you when you exit a little tight off the turn and you don't hit that stack square, you get yourself in trouble in a hurry. Our next pair now coming to the line. 
as you get a good look at the War Wizard back in his pit location. Here's the times that we have to the moment, and as you can see, to no one's surprise, Dennis Anderson at 19.25, sitting in the number one spot, and his bouncing baby boy right now would be number two, as Taz went 20.22, but look at how close all these times are, Ken, and I'm not surprised by that at all. Yeah, and these guys are getting a feel for this track. They haven't been out here at all. Matter of fact, Leo Donald, the first time he ever drove that truck, period, was when he pulled it out for the pit party. So these guys are taking it easy right now. Here's a veteran who was here for the first time, Lupe Sosa, in the new Advanced Auto Parts Grinder. I was really shocked when researching this event to realize that Lupe had never brought El Toro Loco here during all his years running, but now he is in Atlanta in the Advanced Auto Parts Grinder. And there is Lindsey Wink and the built Ford Tough Blue Thunder, the native of Devil's Cooley, Alberta, Canada. They are looking for green. They'll head to the final turn, and it's a slight edge for Lindsey Wink, but he carries wide. Loopy's got a chance to make up some ground and have the quicker time, and he will do that, and Wink's in trouble. Great save by Lindsey. That truck was in trouble. He was smooth to the final turn, Kent, and then it all went awry for the big Ford. He got a lucky break there. I'm going to tell you what these guys are doing. They're taking a look at how soft this track is, and they're tinkering with the idea of flat tracking. I'll bet you we see Tom Mitz come out here and flat track this thing, but when you do that in the middle of the run, it can really upset that truck, and that's what he did. I mean, he got the back end out a little wide. That brought the left front over to the inside. He clipped a bus. Yes, I said a bus, and it knocked that truck almost completely over. Yeah, that bus will come into play big time in freestyle a little later. Let's look at a little low angle oh, here, and man, he's save. coming right in your living room. Wow. I mean, he's got a really, he got a lucky break. Look at that wheel. That wheel's totally bent right there. That's what happens when you slam 10,000 pound truck down on it. Crew Chief Bill Easterly Jr. will be on the job for the built Ford Tough Blue Thunder team and working on that truck to get it ready for round one racing. Back to our qualifying. The two-time world champion, he won racing at Las Vegas in 2007, 2008, of course, Las Vegas, where we crowned the champions in the sport of Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam. That's John Seesock and Batman. And now, Paul Cohen, you documented it earlier, Ken, a bad back injury, broke his back in 2005, was out of the business for several years, and it's just a thrill. Remember, when we saw Cohen coming up the ranks, he drove Pastrana 199, then hopped into the Air Force afterburner before Damon Bradshaw took it over, and he was winning freestyle events. He was winning races. Paul Cohen is a talented shoe. We'll see how much rust there is on him in the Monster Mutt. You know, amazingly enough, he actually drove two more events after he broke his back. He is a tough, tough guy. They are almost even headed to the final turn. These both, just to the naked eye, look like they're going to be pretty good time. And how about that? Paul Cohen's going to get the better of it. I guess it's like riding a bicycle driving one of these advanced auto parts monster jam machines. Yeah, and he was talking to us, as we know. He said, man, I'm pretty nervous. I haven't done this in a long time. So it's good to see him get back out there. I'm sure as soon as he hit the throttle, it all came back to him. A real nice pull there. And he gets through these turns. I mean, again, it's kicking him a little sideways on the entry. We're going to take a look and see how how Mintz does this in a couple of moments. But again, we'll go back to Monster Mutt. By the way, an absolute fan favorite. The kids love this truck. But he gets into the throttle here, transfers some weight up onto that front end to try and get it to turn, try and get it to rotate. On the other side, Seesock was really carrying some speed there through the final turn. Let's get back to our qualifying pair as we bring out to the line. Well, you see the Monster Mud and that 1950 Chop Top Merc looking strong. But here is how so many, or who so many fans came to see tonight. The man that many say built this house, Tom Mintz in Maximum Destruction. And if you take a look at his tires, the lugs are almost completely gone. He has this thing set up to flat track. No sway bars on that truck. This thing could be wicked fast out here. In the other lane, that's Travis Pastrana's Nitro Circus and his buddy, Calgary Alberta's Cam McQueen, driving the Nitro Circus as we go qualifying in Atlanta. Cool. 
goes a cucumber on our advance auto parts monster jam jam cam coming now to the finish and tom mitz lays down a brilliant pass well, tom mitz using the rear steer all the way around this thing both both turns and if you watch cam he was not doing that he was leaving the rear steer alone just let the rear end squared up so needless to say Tom was trying to get that thing to rotate. He did not want to flat track it. So what did he do? He got a little help from the rear steer. And the rear steering mechanism on these trucks is normally run by a toggle switch that steers the rear wheels independently from the steering wheel that handles the front wheels. Absolutely. And his is uh, his is a little different. His rear steer is actually run with its left hand. You can't see it very well there, but it's a paddle that he runs with his left hand. You can see it on there when he needs to. And he'll put his hand back over there on the left side of the truck right there to run that rear steer. Well, you can hear and feel the power when you're on board. Tom Metz at maximum destruction. We are coming back with all the great racing action live on speed. Don't you dare go away. January 30th, America's premier endurance race is on speed. It's a grueling test of grit, teamwork, and pure racing skill. Don't miss the Rolex Sports Car Series 24 Hours of Daytona live January 30th at 3 p.m. Eastern, only on speed. Here is the way the qualifying worked out. And yes, there were two trucks at the top of the pack. Grave Digger, Dennis Anderson at 19.25. Tom Metz, maximum destruction, second quickest at 19.56. Ken, maybe the biggest surprise is the man we've talked about coming back from that severe injury, Paul Cohen, third quickest, and one of only three drivers to break that 20-second barrier. What a job by Cohen. Great job, and I have to also throw one out to McQueen as well, who also, he was fourth quick out there with Nitro Circus, relatively newcomer to this, and he did a great job. Well, and that's one of the things, Ken, that tends to work itself out in qualifying. When you get paired up with a Tom Lynch, you got to go. Yeah, maybe you're racing the clock, but you can see where he is, and I think Cam McQueen saw how Tom Lynch was laying down a great lap really pushed it and got himself a great lap as well and that's going to get him an outstanding matchup in round one even though there's no easy matchups in this field but still you don't want to race dennis or tom first he won't have to by the way you probably hear some rumbling back behind us when you come to one of these shows live there's a lot of racing going on the entire night grave digger can you see that mark schrader got you talk about a, a a journalist here's a guy going for the story Mark is crawling in the truck. Mark, can you hear us? Take it away. I can hear you guys. I told you I was going to be front and center on the front lines from the back all the way to the front. I am sitting in the truck with Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger. Dennis, a 19.25 seconds, fastest qualifier of the night by two tenths of a second. That's sweet. You know, the truck is really feeling good. The track is smooth. I know the more you run on this, uh, run on the clay, it actually gets a little slippier out here for us. Hope that I can just hold it in my lane. Keep laying down the same passes, stay consistent all night, and I'll be in the finals. Well, there you go. That's the veteran talk. You can see he's cool as a cucumber, as you said up there at the top. This is already getting exciting. This guy is bad fast. What an awesome night so far. Lest anybody ask, well, hey, it's live on speed. Why doesn't Dennis get out and do the interview with Mark? Dennis is not coming out of that truck. He straps in, he focuses, and he has gotten and this started last year during what was arguably the greatest year in the history of Dennis Anderson and the drive, as the driver of Gravedigger. He started staying strapped in the truck, and he won a lot of races. So they're going to obviously keep doing it here in 2010. Gravedigger is your fastest qualifier, but that just means we're setting the bracket to go racing. Round one is next, live on speed. Getting ready for tonight's action, more than 10,000 fans came out this afternoon for the Built For Tough party in the pits and the chance to get up close with the drivers and take pictures, get those autographs. And, you know, whenever you're going to an Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam event, make sure you look because most of them have a Built For Tough party in the pits where you can get this close and you just don't get this access to other athletes. And I've said this for years, no one signs more autographs than Dennis Anderson in any business, sports or entertainment. They have to cut off the line, otherwise he will sit there all day long. And here's the cool part. 
this isn't just happening in Atlanta. No, it right. is nationwide. It is actually worldwide once they get going through the entire season. But there's 12 to 15 shows going well, on this let weekend. Get, let me give you the exact number. Feld Motorsports is producing 13 events this weekend, 10 Monster Jams, as well as the Monster Energy Supercross that you'll see live speed on here on Speed later tonight. Also, Arena Cross and the Nuclear Cowboys Tour. All that's going on. So just go to MonsterJam.com and you can link around, check out tickets, get tickets to events, get those pit party passes including tickets to the event everybody wants to go to, the NGK Spark Plugs World Finals in Las Vegas. Well, here's how the qualifying has now turned into a racing bracket. Grave Digger is the fastest qualifier, will take on Superman, who again, seated last. Taz and Batman should be an interesting first round race. Then Nitro Circus will be doing battle with George Bellhan and Escalades. That's kind of one of those new school battles coming up. Now, as we look at the other four races in round one, Monster Mutt, Paul Cohen taking on Leo Donald. Those are two pure racers. Monster Mutt and Iron Man, that's going to be a dandy. War Wizard and Captain's Curse will do battle. Luffy Sosa and the Advanced Auto Parts Grinder to square off with Scott Hartsock and Gunslinger. And look at maybe the matchup of round one because of Blue Thunder's struggles. Round one will set maximum destruction up against Blue Thunder. We've seen that battle in championship races before. Yeah, that is a big, big race. Taking a look at Dennis Anderson there. You can see the hands sticking out. They are checking the what they call the RII, Remote Ignition Interrupter Switch. And there's actually safety officials down on the floor. So if these guys get in trouble, they can shut that truck off with a flip of a switch to help that driver yeah, out. And th that's why they hold their hands up so that the official, when he hits his remote control button, you see they're not touching anything. Dennis's first round opponent is Chad Fortune, the former University of Louisville football player. Played some time in the National Football League and NFL Europe. Now he is in Monster Jam and has been for several years driving Superman. We're going racing in Atlanta. No surprise, Dennis Anderson has the early edge as they will come down to the final turn. Fortune in trouble again. Anderson will win the first race live on speed and advance into round number two as Digger defeats Superman in round one. We're going to take a look at this one more time and uh, and watch the Grave Digger go to work. Keep in mind, they've made so many advancements on this truck. It has a lower cradle in it. The engine sits a little bit lower than it used to years ago, so a nice low center of gravity. He hits everything nice and square, but when he doesn't, it doesn't upset the truck as much as it does some of the other vehicles that you'll see out here. And then, of course, he aims in a little high, and then he exits off nice and tight as we go on board here. This is a, a mobile onboard camera. Pretty cool what they're doing here to give you a nice look around the inside of that turn. Call that the robo cam. The robo cam. A little cam. insider language there. All right. Go back to the starting line now as we get a, or as we watch the end of that run. And you can see our robo cam takes a licking, but it keeps giving us the great pictures. More first round racing action straight ahead. Two time world champion John Seasock behind the wheel of the Batman machine that he won here in his first Atlanta appearance back in 2007. The opposition comes from a driver who has won here before, but that was in freestyle driving Grave Digger. We're talking about Adam Anderson. He is behind the wheel of Tang. Taz has got a problem. He lost it a little bit in the turn. He's still in contention, however, but Adam is all over the place. Inside, outside. Can he find some muscle at the end? Yes, he will. You will not find a more zigzag oh. route to a victory, and he's on his roof. He, he was, was all over the place. Yeah, I mean, the entire run, he was just saving it left and right, trying to maintain speed, gets down there past the finish line, and then, of course, tries to keep it off of the wall, and then it really just hooks an edge and, and rolls that thing over. But, I mean, everything broken on that truck. You see through the steering wheel out so he could get out of that thing as well. I mean, a lot of damage. That, I promise you, was not planned. There is a lot of sand that's been added, but this Georgia Clay notoriously tacky. There's Cole Bernard, the crew chief for Adam Anderson's TAS machine, looking in, making sure first that his driver's okay, and Adam is coming out, and he gives him a pat on the back. 
We're going to look at it again because now Bernard has to assess the damage. Let's go on board, Ken. Up and over the stack there. You can hear the throttle rhythm. Working the throttle, much like that. And then, unfortunately, I mean, just too much speed down there in that turn, and, and it rolled him over. One more look at it here. Good air. Kicks him back sideways. The truck settles down, but he just had so much speed. He had to turn the truck that or go what really is underneath all those banners are some gigantic dumpsters. They are big, heavy and obstacles. There, and and then there, there is wall protection. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. There, you know, it's so. just another safety factor, but he didn't want to bang into one of those. So it was certainly a wild end. Now, Mark Schrader's been on this track driving on this Georgia clay before. Mark, what can you add to all this Taz drama? Standing right here at the starting line, the finish line, watching what had happened with these guys. It was real clear. He got a little bit high, a little bit wide, got up into the marbles, as you would like to say, got in the very tacky Georgia clay as he turned his rear steering, trying to make that turn, settle the truck down, finish the race. It just hooked it hard. He turned over. There's no, no buts about it, man. It just rolled it over. He got in that Georgia clay. And Mark makes a great point. I mean, you see the sulker. We're talking about how slick this is. You talked about them bringing sand in to the inside. It's been stirred up by quads that are out here racing. By the way, that truck fired yeah. up, and, <laughs> and it'll be ready to go. It'll be just fine. But the inside of the turn is loose. The outside, very, very tacky. So Taz appears like he'll be back for round two, but we have more round one racing, and it's coming up when we come back to Atlanta live on speed. We are two races into the first round of live advanced auto parts monster jam racing from atlanta grave digger an easy win over superman taz with a wild win over batman now just so you know if there is damage to taz that won't let him come back after that rollover batman would take his place we will also advance one fast loser from this round to even the brackets out in round number two that way we'll have eight trucks in round two so batman could very well come back we'll see what happens he's got a couple of outs there depending on how some Substantial any damages to Taz, but Adam did drive it off the track. George Bell hands the finish of the lane against Cutthroat Circus and Cam McQueen. Gotta love the spinners. This one, you better keep your eyes on the finish line. McQueen and Bell hand are in a Donnie Brook coming off the final turn. It'll be Escalade, but not by much. Boy, McQueen did a great job in that last set of turns, man. Just kicked the back end out, just drove it around there on the throttle. Couldn't make up the difference because the Escalade got off to a great start, and he nailed the first turn perfectly. You talked about the world's largest spinner wheels. There you see him on George Bellhand's big black Escalade. So Escalade will roll into round two and potentially a matchup with Taz if Adam Anderson is able to come back. By the way, Bellhand, I, I said something about his mohawk. He said, I can tell when I need to cut the mohawk because it hits the top of the, hits the, top of the truck, but that's just how well, close it was right there. It, yeah, he won that by the length of the mohawk, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> so George Bellhand will advance into round number two. This, there's the spinner wheels. You gotta love them. The world's largest spinners. Yes, they are functional. At the starting line, Paul Cohen, who we've talked about in his first Atlanta appearance, uh, appearance, coming back from that big injury. It's so exciting to see him. He qualifies third, but he's got a tough draw against Lee O'Donnell. Remember, the story was two years ago. Ford had Blue Thunder booked into the Georgia Dome, but Ford decided, hey, we're going to roll out the F-150. We want our biggest stars. So they brought Lindsey Wink, Toby Keith, Rick Crawford, and several others up to Detroit to launch the new F-150. Well, Blue Thunder needed a driver. They called Lee O'Donnell on Wednesday. He grabbed his helmet, hopped in the truck, and won this event two years ago. He'd love to duplicate that his first time in Ironman, but right now he would be considered the underdog if you go off the qualifying times against the Monster Mutt. He's a seasoned racing veteran, though. He spends a lot of time off-road racing throughout the summer, and it looks like he might be having an issue there with the Iron Man. I saw before, I saw the, the orange light flashing inside the cab, which has something to do with the RII. It's basically saying, hey, this, this thing is not working properly right now. And Mark might be able to fill in a little bit more on this as if we have uh, the ability to get him out there. Obviously, nobody's allowed on the well, floor when these trucks are there, out here. There is an RII issue, because I can see the official was looking, and now they've cleared it up. So thumbs up, the truck is started, he's good to go. So it's Lee O'Donnell, the New Jersey native, an Iron Man, and Paul Cohen in Monster Mutt. Round one racing, live from Atlanta on speed.
These drivers are looking for a green. Leo Donald, first time in this truck, turns the headlights on. Very adjustable combination for the shocks in these trucks. Whole shot, if you will, went to O'Donnell. He got the better start, but Cohen has already made up the ground. To the final turn, Monster Mutt seems to have the edge, but watch that finish line. O'Donnell trying to make up ground, he won't get there. Less than a length, and the Mud lost his tail. <laughs> what? What can we expect next? Well, you're racing hard. You're racing hard when you do that, man. <laughs> That's exactly what happens. That was a really great race there as well. And these guys are starting to get a handle on this track. Yeah, they are. It's getting closer and closer. It's so difficult to run that rear steer because when you push the button, it either goes all the way or it doesn't. It snaps back to center. So it's hard to run it just a little bit and then really get that truck to settle in. These guys are very talented at what they do. I think we've got Mark Schrader ready with Tan. Mark, what's going on back there with that truck? I'm back here in the pits, you guys, and what's happening is they're checking out the truck. You can see the tech officials are just simply looking at the truck, making sure mechanically it is safe and sound to run. However, the only damage you're going to see on this truck, you see the tech officials, as I said, these guys are up here checking out. It's purely body damage. It's only cosmetic. It's just parts, nothing mechanical. It's what makes the truck look good, not what makes it go fast. There's no problem here in Taz. So, so We're ready to go. Mark, Mark, they're saying 100% that truck will make the next round, no doubt. That's what he told us, an absolute no doubter. And you can see the crew working up there. Actually, some of the Max D guys actually helping out there. Let's get back to our starting line where Alex Blackwell and that 1941 Willys called Captain's Curse will square off against Randy Moore, what he calls a futuristic Willys in the War Wizard. Both drivers are at the starting line and they're looking for green. Trouble. Blackwell's in trouble and over he goes. They will shut Randy Moore down. He wins the race. Alex Blackwell in the same spot that Taz went over. Yeah, I'm sure we'll have another look at this, but he was getting really comfortable with the second group of turns on his side of the track where he was starting to flat track pretty hard. So I'm wondering if he got pretty comfortable to go out there and really try this thing, really stand in the throttle, and it fit him. If you get too wide, you get in the tacky stuff. We'll have a look at it right here. Goes in. Oh, uh, he hit the car. He hit the turning he car. He hit the car, absolutely. That answers that question if there was any. But it was the nay exact same spot that Taz went over. They're trying to hug the bottom side of these turns. When Monster Jam officials last year took out the turning poles, they felt like the five-second penalty was just too big of a penalty. And they said, we're going to use turning cars because if you hit them, you penalize yourself. Well, Alex Blackwell just proved that big time. Tough break for him. I mean, it's a game of inches out here with these guys as well. They're trying to chop that turn down. The shortest distance, obviously, on the bottom side of these turns. But if you go in a little bit high, I mean, not much, you just move out a couple of feet and then really chop it off on the exit side, you can carry more speed down the straightaway. That's a good friend of Alex's, R.L. Harris, one of the best crew chiefs in the business over there, just talking to make sure he's all right. And he's disgusted. I mean, he's not happy at all. And, and I, I know Alex felt like he was going to win that race and thought he could probably run through this bracket and do what he did back uh, in Las Vegas when he marched all the way into our world championship race only to finish second to Tom Mintz. Alex is very confident, very talented, but this is just one of those things that you mentioned. Once you hit that car, you got yourself in a little bit of a problem, and when he high-sided it, he was pretty much toast at that point. It is amazing how safe these trucks are. They've come so far in the past 10 years. They are very, very durable as well as we watch them roll this one over, and this thing will be good to go. Let's go down. Mark Schrader standing by. He's caught up with Alex Blackwell. Mark? In the front lines, down front and center, Alex Blackwell. Same turn, last rollover for Taz. What happened to you in this turn? Uh, you know, I got a, a little overzealous, and I got too close to the car, and I clipped it, and it come up on two wheels, and it, you know, it was, it's better just to hit the brakes than, to, you know, to run into the dumpsters and, you know, do any other kind of damage. So hopefully we can, you know, look it over, and it should be good for freestyle. As we take a look at that replay, Alex, I know you didn't see it. Take a look, turn around, look at the monitor here. You see you clip the car. It's up on two wheels bicycling. You're trying to save it. You tap the brakes. The safest, smartest thing you could do. Yeah, you know, at that speed, you know, you could push these dumpsters, even though they weigh a lot. You could push them right into the stands. And you know what? It was better just to dis destroy the body, and we'll fix it and keep going. 
Safety first, you heard it here. Alex Blackwell, captain's curse. You'll know he'll be back for freestyle. Well, as you say, he's uh, going to fire it up. Howie Dalton, his crew chief, fires it up and is going to take it back and drive it back, and that's a good sign. Yeah, that one. That one's just fine. I mean, yep. It's cosmetic damage. That's all it is. Like, as, as I was saying before, they're so tough. These things are so durable. I mean, when you're watching these guys fly them 125 feet in the air, and then nothing breaks. That thing's just fine. So we continue on through round one. You see Grave Digger, Taz, who rolled over, but looks like he'll come back, as Mark reported for us, and Escalade advanced on this side of the bracket the way we have it set for you. Then the other side of the bracket, that's what we're moving through right now. Monster Mutt and War Wizard have advanced. War Wizard only had to go to one turn to advance because when Alex went over, that advanced him. The advanced auto parts grinder and gunslinger, maximum destruction of Blue Thunder just ahead. Scott Hartsock, look at that. If you've watched the Gunslinger over the years develop, this is the most exotic paint job he's ever put together, and he's proud of it. He wondered if it was too busy. I think it's sweet. Yeah, it's a sweet-looking truck, but more importantly, a very functional truck. This thing is very, very fast. Great shock package inside of this thing. He's very, very happy with it. Buff tires. He's hoping to stay up on top of this stuff. When a great King shock package, I should say. He's got the Kings on it. So important setup on this particular truck is he has a sway bar on the back he has no sway bar on the front advanced auto parts grinder and loopy sosa that's the other truck you're looking at is there's a good shot of gunslinger getting staged the grinder made its debut for the advanced auto parts team in minneapolis last month and i, I just can't tell you how excited loopy sosa veteran a former world champion who loved driving el toro loco and the reputation he had with that truck he just loves the relationship he has with advanced auto parts and this truck is it's looks like it's going to be very special. he's got a tough draw though here against hartsock Gun, uh, gunslinger knows this georgia play and knows it well Loopy's hanging in there. Yeah, I think Loopy's actually had, this, had a small lead. Loopy also has something else going on, a little bigger front tire. Here they come to the finish line, and the advanced auto parts grinder noses it out. We'll wait for the official call. And boy, Scott Hartsock did a nice job of avoiding any further trouble as he slid off the track. Everybody giving it everything they've got to win these races, and that's going to happen. Speaking of Lupe, a little bit earlier today, all the tires are marked the same, 66 inch tires, but his front tires, after measuring them, are actually about five inches taller than the rear tires. So he felt like it would help him turn that truck a little bit better. Another look at it there. Man, hits that stack. The last minute he squares it up and nails it perfectly. One more time here. I mean, just a great driving job. That was an awesome race right there. I mean, very, very close. Gunslinger kept it in the ballpark, and then he gave it everything Whoa, he had. Nearly. <laughs> you, exactly. <laughs> Hanging on to her. Nonetheless, though, Gunslinger just now has to hope that he's the fast loser of this round. Again, in the first round, we will take the seven winners and the fastest loser, and that'll get us to an even number. This there is the he race is. you were talking about. We are on board with the eight-time world champion, and as you can see, He's picked up trophies under the name Goldberg, Team Mint, and Maximum Destruction here in Atlanta. Watch his eyes when we go on board. He never blinks. Lindsey Wink in the Built for Tough Blue Thunder. When Lindsey was making his name in Iron Outlaw, this was the guy he always had trouble beating. Let's see if he's got it. Tom kind of clipped the car as well. Let's watch him as they come across. One more time around, they were dead even that time. To the finish. It'll be maximum destruction. Lindsey Wink loses it on the final turn, and Blue Thunder is done because he won't be fast loser having that problem before crossing the finish line. Boy, this track is tricky tonight. It man. is. It is throwing these guys some curveballs. You really have to be patient with this thing. If you feel the truck starting to slide, you've got to feather that throttle a little bit. You've got to get back out of that thing a little bit to save it. Otherwise, it will loop you around. Here's a look at Lindsay. Lindsay comes in and then chops down hard on that turn. That's what I was talking about. Chopping down hard on the exit of the turn to try and get a little closer to that finish line, but it bit him. And Ken, that's where a driver, a competitor like Lindsay, knows he's behind. He's got one chance, and that's to put it through the floorboard. He started the move too early, and he spins her out. Well, what happened now that I take another look at it, that previous stack sent him off way wide. So he was trying to arc that turn a little bit differently. Round one racing has been completed. 
Digger, Max D, the Advanced Auto Parts Grinder. Yeah, we've got a whole bunch of superstars going to round two, and that's coming up when we come back to Atlanta. Don't go away. Meet the daring who face down fear behind the wheel. Wednesday, Speed introduces you to the brave truckers who move the biggest, most treacherous payloads on the planet. Dangerous drives, heavy haulers. Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern, only on Speed. Well, we have gone through round one. Nitro Circus is the fastest loser. He will come back and for his troubles get a match with Brave Digger <laughs> in round two. Then Taz to square off against Escalade. Now, the other half of the bracket after our round one racing shows Monster Mutt will square off with War Wizard. And what a story Paul Cohen may be before this thing is over. And then Lupe Sosa in the advanced auto parts grinder to battle Tom Nance in maximum destruction. That's our second round. It's coming up. But right now, we're going trackside with Mark Schrader. Take a look at this as Dennis Anderson is getting to line up on this track right here and now. Absolutely, this track is where there's a problem. Look at this dirt. It's soft and slippery right here. As you go into this turn and come down here, just a smidge down here, you'll see how clay and tacky it is. This is where the problem is. We're going racing, guys, now. You can see the Nitro Circus machine with Cam McQueen. He looks the part, doesn't he? I mean, he's a buddy of Travis Pastrana's, and again, uh, he's just thrilled to be out here. Loves driving an advanced auto parts monster jam machine, but he's got to go up against this guy. Boy, is he focused, and has he been? Dennis Anderson in the Grave Digger, as many wins as he's had, as many great years as he's had, 2009 was probably his best ever. The only thing he didn't get was another world championship. Yeah, five double downs. I mean, that That's is difficult of. to do. Nobody's ever done it before in the history of the sport. He's definitely on his game. Very, very consistent. And you can tell he's changed his mindset. We'll talk more about this in freestyle as well, but he's always been very, very focused when it comes to racing. Glad you're here with us in Atlanta with 65,000 fans. You know, we talked about earlier about Build Motorsports and all the events they're going to have this weekend. Over 250,000 fans will be out at Build Events live this weekend. We're glad you're here with us on Speed. Digger and Nitro Circus. Cam McQueen didn't give him nothing off the line. He was right there. It's on. Oh, Cam just missed it. Not on now. He'll try to fire back up and stay out of Dennis's way, but this race is over. So we have two tricky parts to this track, clearly, Ken. We have the area where Taz and Captain's Curse went over down on the far end, and the right-hand side of our screen as we're looking at it. And then we have this area just coming around the turning cars. That's been at least three different trucks. They've spun right into that area. You have to stay smooth. The more you watch this, the more you realize you have to be smooth. Right here, he's come in. The truck starts to get a little loose. He clips the car. It's done. But what had happened was the back was starting to step out on him. So you have to check up. You don't want to, but you have to. On We're board. Going. Absolutely. Go on board. Right hand for him is running the rear steer. You see him reach up there. It's a, it's a post. He wraps his hand around it. It helps keep him in that seat. And he can also run the rear steer. Now, these have glides in them for the most part. They have two-speed automatic transmissions. So once they get going, they just leave it in second gear. Grave Digger is the first driver to claim a spot in the semifinals. Could his son join him there? Adam Anderson and Taz will try to do just that in this round two matchup, but he has got himself a tough assignment. Oh, yeah. George Bellhan has really been on his game over the last couple of years in an Escalade. And he's tired of finishing second. He is. Now, that's mostly coming freestyle, but he's had some racing runner-ups as well. No, Bellhan watched 2010 to be his. got out of the throttle early on that stack to get the tires back on the ground. Let's and the truck. Sam spun out. Taz is done. Yep. Taz is done, and it'll be an easy win for George Bell and an Escalade, despite what you were talking about, because Adam Anderson, not only did he spin it, oh, he is mad now. He really ripped some more of that seat back on there. He was out of sync in round one. We talked about it. The truck was loose. He was trying to gather it up. Of course, he finishes up the yep. run here, well, but... Like his dad, he's going to finish the whole thing like a crazy man. No doubt about that. He's very upset, no doubt. He will be... Uh, he'll be ready for freestyle. Oh, I guarantee you that. <laughs> yeah. But Escalade has gotten himself a berth in our Final Four.
And again, the back end just stepping out on him. And I don't know if he hooked that left front tire or not, but that back end stepped out on him, just carried a little too much speed on the exit of that turn. These guys want to pick up that throttle. They can see that straightaway. You want to pick up the throttle, and it kicks the back end all the way around. Nice and slow right there. Very controlled. And then you could hear him. He picked up yeah. the throttle and just hit it too hard. Now, what we've got, you know, we've got all these great camera angles. Let's see what Dad was thinking. We had a camera on Dad while he watched his son. Ah. Frustration there. Love he, and passion, man. Yeah, he wanted to see, he wanted to see Taz get the win to come into the next round. As a father who works with his son who races yep. a lot, it, it quite possibly. It's more fun to watch your son go out and do well than it is to do it yourself. All right, Randy Moore and the War Wizard. He uh, got a break first time around with Captain's Curse flipping over. So now he is going to have to strap in tight and pull to the line against one of the stories early on on this night. Paul Cohen back in the saddle and looking good. He has was the third fastest qualifier, knocked off Iron Man in round one, and now he'll square off with the big horsepower that Randy Moore out of Bristol, Tennessee puts in that Willys. Here we go. The old drag racer Randy Moore sprung off the line, but Paul Cohen, he is smooth as silk. Let's watch his final turn. I mean, Paul is just going into these turns and driving it brilliantly. This kid has got this track, and he's got it figured out. You better watch out for Monster Mutt all night long. What a made-for-television story, right? To come back after breaking his back. And keep in mind, he didn't step away from this sport. He's an excellent fabricator. So he's been working on these trucks, and you just know he wanted to get an opportunity to get back inside one. And boy, he's making the best of it here tonight. Let's nice replay here. No, it kicks him off. It kicks him off wide, but he keeps his composure. Checks up a little bit. Puts some weight up on the front tires to try and get the thing to turn in. The thing was, he didn't get overexcited. This event has so much history. It's been unpredictable in racing. In 2003, Steve Reynolds won this event in Rage and Steel. Alan Pizzo won it in 2005 in Predator, one of his only televised wins. John Seesock, first race he ever won in Batman was here. We told you about the Lee O'Donnell story. Could Paul Cohen add his name to that list of surprises? We'll find out as this night goes on. This guy isn't going to yeah. want it to happen. <laughs> Tom Mintz and Maximum Destruction, the native of Paxton, Illinois. Monster Jam's only eight-time world champion to square off against Lupe Sosa and the advanced auto parts grinder. Lupe has himself a world championship as well. He won freestyle in 2004. We heard it earlier. He calls this the people's truck, and everybody loves it. He loves you. Talk about how excited he is. He could not be any happier to get back inside of one of these trucks. Advanced Auto Parts Grinder. Maximum destruction for the final berth in the semi. Full truck smooth through the turn. On the jam pin, you can see it's a slight but very slight edge of the maximum. He stayed out of the front on that last day. But he will win the race, although Lupe gave him all he wanted. I'm telling you, slower is faster out here tonight. Tom Mintz just did the same thing that I spoke about before. He went over the stack. He checks up just a little. Here he airs it out. But when he yep. comes, when he was on the other side of the track, he checked up, got the front tires down on the ground. He exited that last turn hardcore. That's when he aired it out big. We'll call it three quarters of a length, the margin of victory. And here you get our ground level camera. And you can see that maximum destruction and Tom Mentz is on it. So we've got our final four. Great Digger, Escalade, Monster Mutt, and maximum destruction. And they're going to settle the winner here in just a few minutes when we come back to Atlanta on speed. You are a part of history. Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam history on speed for the first time ever coming into your home live. And we're thrilled you're a part of it. We are now down to our final four in racing. Here's how the progression has come to have Gray Digger taking on Escalade in our first semifinal race. And then in our second semifinal race, Tom Mentz and Maximum Destruction, who was our second fastest qualifier, has marched up against Paul Cohen and Monster Mud, the third fastest qualifier. So what is kind of interesting, Ken, on a night that has seen some wild races and some unpredictability, the guys who were fast in qualifying are making it stand up in the racing. They're the ones who are moving through the bracket. 
This is going to be a great battle, and this is definitely going to test the nerves of Paul Cohen. Okay, now, one of the things you saw and you've seen Gravedigger running first throughout the night. There has to be an issue with either Gravedigger or Escalade. If there is, the Monster Jam rules allow us to drop and switch the pairs. Since Monster Mud and Maximum Destruction are ready, they'll run first. They'll give a couple extra minutes to the Digger and the Escalade teams to get them ready to come back out. And a testament to these engines as well. They build yeah. so much heat. They fire these things right back up and come out for another round. Tom Mench has won four World Racing Championships and four Freestyle Championships at the NGK Spark Plugs World Finals in Las Vegas. He wants to get the 9 and 10 this coming March 27th when we go back to crown the 11th world champions. Well, he wants to start with a win. He's got to beat an awfully good Paul Cohen and Monster Mutt to do it. Here we go. The winner of this goes to the championship race. Paul on the gas, baby. He didn't give up anything. Yeah, oh. nice high He bicycled, and that's going to give Mets a big edge. Boy, we had Mets. Yep. Mets struggled a little bit, too. Tom Mance and Maximum Destruction coming on to the turn, and it'll be Max D, your winner. So we had talked at length about Paul Cohen and Monster Mutt, and what a great story, and it is a great story, but that one bobble, you can't make it against Max D. We'll watch this thing one more time as we watch Tom Metz here, of course, backing in, but Metz airing it out hard when he comes off that final turn. I mean, you don't have to worry about anything at that point. You just stand in the throttle, but the previous turns, that's where... Gets him in trouble, and yeah, that was actually a really nice save, but that's exactly where Mark was standing. That's where it gets tacky. He dug through the soft stuff, and it hooks that edge right there, gets some grip. Boy, it'll get you in trouble in a hurry. Well, we talked about the greatest rivalry in motorsports to renew it in the championship race. Tom oh, Benz has done his part of the job. Threw him. <laughs> now Dennis Anderson. And Dennis is pulling to the line. They're going to escalate, and here he comes. I'm about to say, if he doesn't move, once Dennis is set, they'll put him on a two-minute clock, and if he can't get to the line in two minutes, then they would go back to Taz, and Taz would get that spot because Escalade eliminated it. I did notice when we were at commercial break, there was some smoke out of the back of an Escalade, so I don't know if he's having some engine issues over there, what the case was. I don't see any smoke now, so hopefully he's okay, but maybe that's why they gave him a little more time. Great look at the... The neon lights and the spinner rims and the mohawk, it's all a part of the image that George loves. George Bellhead out of the Chicago, Illinois area driving an Escalade, and he has to take on that man. The red-hot Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger. You know, this is Gravedigger 20, by the way, for those of you who keep up with the lineage. And I was just going to say, you know, a big part of that is the confidence he has in this truck. This truck is second to none, has the best parts and pieces available. We're going racing in the semifinals. We got a report from Mark Schrader that it appears there's some leaking in the transmission on Escalade. That will cost him a chance to win this race. But well, his problem is he's up against Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger to the final turn. And this one is all Gravedigger. If you turned on speed tonight wanting to see Dennis Anderson and Tom Metz thrown out again, you're going to get it in the championship race just a little bit from now because the two big guns have delivered. You know what's so cool about those guys is they stay so calm and cool against everybody else. But when they race each other, I guarantee you the nerves go to another level. Here's a look at Bellhand. Bellhand gets in a little trouble right there, man. It really kicks him off sideways and way out of bounds. Again, it changes the arc of that next turn, and it costs you so much time. In the meantime, Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger, Tom Mentz and Maximum Destruction have been the best. But oh, we had another look here at Bellhand. Uh, yeah, he just kicked it out. I mean, it, it looked good, but these guys are fighting with an ever-changing track, and it's difficult. We're making history tonight on speed. So how appropriate is it that the first championship race live will be Max D and Great Digger, and it's coming up next. We are back live for the first time ever. The Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam Series is live on speed. I'm Scott Douglas, along with Ken Stout and Mark Schrader. Thrilled that you are along, and this is what it's all about, the championship race and the two biggest guns. Again, we call it the greatest rivalry in motorsports. It's about to be renewed one-on-one -on -one in the championship round. Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger 
versus Tom Mintz and Maximum Destruction. And that's why there are 65,000, and they could have sold thousands more tickets to this event. And that's why so many of our great fans are tuned in. Awesome he got it to John having his birthday here. How about but, that. Yeah, the signs, the effort so many of the fans put in. And you should do that if you're going to a Monster Jam event. Take the time to make a cool sight because we love showing them here on Speed. Absolutely. The fans are just as colorful as our trucks out here. They love their monster trucks and they always get a good show. And there is, well, there's one. Look at that. I mean, you don't just color that in a couple of hours. That was a lot of work in that Grave Digger sign. And uh, a lot of fans. And you know what I love is that, yeah, we still see so many Grave Digger fans. And of course, we appreciate the speed signs. But now you see them. I saw some great war wizard signs. Say hello to Mammy. <laughs> Hi, Mammy. How are you? <laughs> and we, but we see so many more now, many new signs for other trucks. It's not just about Grave Digger and Maximum Destruction, and that's what's so awesome. Well, this is a big race. How big is this race? Well, I personally think a race like this, this early in the season, can set the tone for the rest of the season between these two guys. The rivalry is so big, it's so bitter. And these guys like each other off the track, but on the track, it is bitter. Tom Mentz will take on Dennis Anderson. There you get a look. Now, consistently, let's tell it like it is, Grave Digger has been faster round by round. Last round, Grave Digger was almost a half second faster. All that means nothing now. They're both in the championship race, and you better believe Mentz is going to pull those belts up a little bit tighter and try to find that extra half second. And there you see, now we're back with Tom. We've got on boards, Ken, looking at both of these guys, so we're going to get great shots from all the different angles. And you see Tom saying hi. He's cool, waving to his fans at home. How about that? And Dennis is just checking it out. And you see these guys, they are so strapped in. I mean, not only the seat belts, but obviously the head and neck restraint devices that they have on them. I mean, everything is buckled down, man. They cannot move their head or their bodies hardly at all. And the safety now with the new custom seats, and there's so many things to keep these drivers safe. But right now, all they're thinking about is that big trophy down on the stage and who is going to be our first ever racing champion of a live event on speed. It'll either be Maximum Destruction or Grave Digger. Here we go. It is showtime in Atlanta. Pretty even right there. Slight edge to match to the final turn. Tom carries it out wide, but he's on the throttle. Tom Mintz found the extra half second at maximum destruction. Barring a call by an official that we didn't see, it is Tom Mintz's night so far in the house that they say he built here in Atlanta. What a race. That, what a race. That is awesome. Look at him, boy. Just kick the back end of that truck out, stand on the throttle, and then up and across the finish line. That was the last set of turns. Beautiful job. Dennis Anderson, he was very patient that last set of turns. He had no choice. So fast. Length of a wheel. That's the, the margin of victory. And you know, when you look at that last turn, Ken, that is Tom Mintz refusing to lose. He was on the ragged edge. He was either going to dump that thing, fly off the track, or win the race. And he won the race. Beautiful job, and he'll pull it right in. Oh, he gives him a nudge. <laughs> gives him a little bit of love. He's like, move it over, man. I, I, I've been in here. I come, come right on in. We talked about it. Hey, these guys have built a lot of respect. I'm going to celebrate right now. They build a lot of respect for each other, but make no mistake about it. Those helmets go on, the horns come out, and these guys just want to drill each other into the ground. And that truck is really a, a lot different than a lot of the other trucks that are out here. No sway bars on that one, a coil over suspension on it. A lot of the guys don't think it's the way to go, but that one's been doing it for 10 years, and he's won eight championships in it, so how do you argue with that? Watch this. Look at this crowd. Look at the crowd reaction top. Can they you tell on their feet, baby? Can you tell how big this is to these drivers, knowing that not only is Tom waving to the 65,000 here, but to everybody watching at home, to our troops watching overseas, who we want to say hi to and thank you for keeping us safe and letting us do this. There he is. He's out of the truck. Listen to this place. They're going nuts. We talk about the RII. They'll be able to shut this off if need be. He's a big man, and he is a strong man. Listen to this place. Right now, he's a very happy man. 
the Georgia Dome. Absolutely rock and roll. Let's put a little showboat in there. Got a little mustard for the hot dog there. He is so passionate about oh. what he does. When things do not go right, you do not want to be around that guy. Yeah, like last time out in Minneapolis, he had a terrible night, and he spiked his helmet, and that guy Beaver, his crew chief, Randall Lambert, Mark Cole, his team, they were hiding from him. Tonight, it's all about, hey, doubling down, because you can only win the double down trophy by winning racing, by winning freestyle. Tom is now the only guy who can do it, and he's telling Brandon Lambert and his team, you get it ready, I want to double down. Right now, though, he is heading over in the neighborhood of Mark Schrader, Mark, you down there, take it away. I am down here. I am with your racing winner here in Atlanta and Monster Jam fans watching on Speed tonight for the very first ever live event exclusively on Speed. Tom Mance, Maximum Destruction. You are a racing winning tonight. And it's awesome, man. Such a man of dream final to go up against my arch enemy, Dennis Anderson. All the people at home watching on Speed in Paxton, Illinois. Love every one of you. Thanks for your support. All the Atlanta fans, man. I can't think of a better way to be back here two years later and win. I got one thing left to do, and I'm the only man that can do it. Double down, baby. All the way. The truck's running great. So you know what? This is maximum destruction on the side. We got one thing to do. Sacrifice it to the Atlanta, Georgia fans. We love each and one of every one of you. Thanks for coming out. Speed, Monster Jam. Woo! That speaks volumes, Tom. We talked earlier, here's your champion. You said you had to redeem yourself two years ago. You are back, you did it. You are a racing winner tonight. Man, it couldn't be better. Awesome, such a tough group of guys helping us in Paxton. Brandon Lambert, Mark Cole, all the guys in the shop, Chuck Warner, love each and every one of you. Man, they keep coming out in big numbers. The fans here are incredible. 65,000 people and a bunch watching at home. Woo! And by the way, Tom, let me remind you and tell you, you don't know this yet, but Tom Mance just made the fastest pass of the night over qualifying in all racing at an 18.53 seconds, Tom. I had to say something to Tank. I knew that guy was going to be tough. He's a tough competitor. I love racing him. I've been racing him for 17 years. Started in a little fairground in Pueblo, Colorado, and now it's live on Speed Channel, Atlanta, Georgia, man. What an awesome feeling. We're on TV live. We're on TV live, buddy. <laughs> there you go, guys. Back to the booth. Oh, goodness. What a great interview. And Mark was right on it. 18.53, a half second faster than Dennis's best lap. Tom Mentz brought it when it mattered most. And here is the finish line on the championship race between the two greats. But we're not done yet. Freestyle is coming up next, and it's live on speed. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, where Tom Mintz in maximum destruction has defeated Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger to win racing, but freestyle is still to come. Now, as we've talked about, tonight's historic first ever live Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam on Speed is part of six and a half coverage, six and a half hours of great live coverage here on the network. After we're done here, we're going out to Anaheim, where things are already heating up for round one of the Monster Energy AMA Supercross. Let's get the latest on the stories developing out there. Here's Aaron Bates. The big story here at Anaheim 1 is if the defending Anaheim 1 winner of last year, the number 33 of Josh Grant with the Joe Gibbs race team, will be racing here this evening. He ended up having a crash last Tuesday at a private practice track in California, sustaining a head injury and also a broken nose. Right now, it's undetermined whether or not he will be riding tonight. However, he did ride press day and he did ride practice this afternoon. You want to stay tuned immediately here, right after Monster Jam, live on speed, to find out what his race day decision will be. Aaron, we're definitely going to be staying and watching all that great Monster Energy AMA Supercross action. It, too, is live right after we're done here. But what a night we've developed already. The electricity in this place when Tom Metz and Dennis Anderson pulled to the line, Ken, that was just special on this very special night. You couldn't have scripted this any better. I mean, the way the ladder worked out, both guys really had to scrap their way there. Paul Cohen almost stealing all the thunder from both of those guys, really doing a great job in Monster Mutt. But if you look at the times, those guys kept picking away, and that's what they do. Every time they get a look at the track, they get a little bit quicker. And we heard men say, I saved a little in the tank because I know that guy's going to be fast. And he pulled it out when he needed it. We heard from Tom 
but Mark Schrader also wanted to get a chance to catch up with the icon himself and see what he's thinking after that hard-fought race. So let's send it down trackside right now. Here's Mark Schrader. You know, the word loser is a strong word. I would never want to use that. Second place runner-up, Dennis Anderson. You know you hate to say that. You're just the first loser of the night. But what an awesome race. It was a close run. Oh, man, you know, I was kind of on a rail out there. I was trying to stay focused. I guess Tom stepped up his game just a little bit. I was trying to stay where I was. Kind of skipped around one corner there, a little too slow, I think. That's what lost the race. I think my first turn did. But, hey, man, there's always next time. I'm not going to cry over spilt milk. At least I did make it to the finals. Absolutely, Dennis. You know, you're such a sportsman here. As we talked in the open of the show tonight, you said, you know, I was double down winner here last year. This year, I need to back that up. So what? You didn't back it up. You lost to one of your best friends. You can't lose to a better guy and better competitor. That's right. I'm telling you, man. Tom Mintz, he lets it all hang out. And, man, he is, he, he's, you know, he's a character when he's out on that track. I don't like him when he's behind the wheel. But, honestly, behind the scenes, we have really grown to, to like each other, I actually love each other in the sport that we do out here. And it's good. But we are competitive, and I do. I hate for that guy to win. There ain't no doubt about it. He hates me to win. But, hey, it makes for good racing. The fans love it. You know, what can I say, man? We're not done here tonight. You know, we, I still got one more competition that I can knock his feet out from underneath of him. And that's freestyle. So I'm going to step off the fire in freestyle. Hopefully I can ride this clock out, get on a bonus round, and pull off a win in freestyle. I got to walk away from here with some kind of trophy. He wants a trophy. He wants a perfect score of 40 to 45. He's looking for the win. Absolutely. Great job tonight, Dennis. Thank you for your time. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, all you viewers out there. I'd like to thank all my family, my beautiful wife, Carissa, Kristen, Weston, all you guys sitting in front of the screen at home. Daddy will be home tomorrow. I love you guys. There's Dennis Anderson and Grave Digger, but that's the man of the hour, Tom Mintz, who wins racing in maximum destruction. And did you notice that Dennis Anderson actually ran his fastest lap of the night? Tom just found that extra muscle, and he's now talking to Brandon Lambert, his crew chief, because you know, as much as Dennis said he wants that freestyle trophy, Tom is dying to get that double down piece, and the only way you get it is to win racing and freestyle. He's got a shot at it. Now, this has been such a historic night already. It's a historic year. It's going to be a great year on speed, a great year for our sport. And one of the amazing things that has happened is the big news that came out a month ago. And that is that Advanced Auto Parts has become the first ever title sponsor of the Monster Jam Series. And they formed the Advanced Auto Parts Grinder Team. Earlier, we were able to get a chance to talk to Greg Johnson, who was able to put it all together for Advanced Auto Parts. It's great to be here in Atlanta, the first ever live show at the Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam. This is a great city for us. We have 100 stores and we serve millions of customers. And we're excited to be here and be a part of such an amazing event. You know, one of the most exciting things about our relationship was actually making a decision to sponsor a truck and give that truck a name. We chose Grinder for a lot of reasons. It represents what we stand for, which is hard work, dedication, going the extra mile. And you know what, the everyday heroes and our fans, the people that we care tremendously about, their, their lives sometimes is a grind. And we thought Grinder was just, it's, the, it's a great way to, to commemorate the efforts of our customers and the fans that attend the Advance Auto Parts Monster Jam. I think Lupe is the perfect driver for this, to go the extra mile, you know, give a second effort, and really do whatever we can to make our customers excited. And uh, in this case, I think he's going to turn it on for the Monster Jam fans. Yeah, he embodies the brand, you know, we've seen him over the last number of years. We actually have sponsored him in a, a number of races, and uh, you know, he's a former freestyle board champion. He's a winner. Uh, he relates well to people, and he represents what we believe in, which is we're all out there in service of somebody else. And uh, in his case, it's the Monster Gym fans, and for our case, it's our customers. And so uh, he's, a, he's a great fit for us. The huge news that Advanced Auto Parts has taken over. It's now the Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam Series. And look for the Advanced Auto Parts Grinder. We're looking for Monster Jam Freestyle Advanced Auto Parts style. And we're going to start tearing it up when we come back to Atlanta. Don't you dare go anywhere. Tom Mintz celebrates the first ever racing victory live on speed in the advanced auto parts monster jam series but his work is only half done 
He wants that coveted double down trophy to get it. He'll have to beat the stars cut in lineup in freestyle. And the wild action, the carnage, is coming up next. It's freestyle time. Welcome back to the Atlanta, Georgia Dome, where this is what you're going to see. 14 trucks giving it everything that they've got. And really, this is a no holds barred judged competition. Ken Stout back with me. I'm Scott Douglas. Mark Schrader on the floor here in the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. And we are live bringing you all this coverage on speed. Starting this huge year of live action on speed. But Ken, I can think of no better way to start it than with a throwdown Monster Jam freestyle, especially when Dennis Anderson says he's got something to prove. Yeah, he's going to come out here and go hard. But he has a lot of competition out here as well. Everybody out here wants to get out to this thing. 90 seconds of regulation time. 30 seconds of bonus time. That is two full minutes, which is 30 seconds longer than what they typically used to have. So obviously six judges there. You can read below how they're going to add them up and drop the score. Well, the key is those six judges will score just the 90 seconds. There's a separate judge who judges bonus time and can offer up to five extra points. That's how we get to 45. Here is the order and what pressure have they put on Paul Cohen. Here comes Monster Buddies on the track and we are underway. Nice job, got it up on two wheels, but didn't get himself in trouble. The time starts when they hit the first obstacle, so the clock is ticking. And some huge obstacles out here, I might add. Paul Cohen in the monster mutt, and he looks like he's sizing up that bus stack right off the bat. Woo, that thing is so steep. Catches a small wheelie off of it. Still about 30 seconds into the run, plenty of time. Boy, don't you love this overhead shot we've got in? We both absolutely went to the root of the Georgia Dome for that last shot. We told we had cameras everywhere. Now I think this is what he might have been more nervous about than anything. Coming out, coming out here after breaking his back, and then knowing he's gonna have to put his body to the test here. Nice job. Yeah, because you come to this event, you better bring it. You bring your A game. Paul knows it, and he's thrilled to be here. Getting down now into his final 30 seconds of regulation time. You know, one of the things that we're talking about, again, if you don't fill the clock, the judges will deduct points. So the first thing, you've got to go big, but you've got to balance it and be able to fill the time. And it looks like Paul's going to do that. That's something that's happened here lately and started to touch on that before. Two minutes for one of these trucks is a long, yep. long time. You have to go aggressive. You have to be controlled enough to keep that truck together. And it's so competitive now, it's tough to win without getting at least into bonus time, if not getting some bonus points. Well, Cohen is into bonus time. Oh, he yeah. The clock. And look at that. They cross call, thread, they, baby. They call that a cross Woo! thread, a combination, and he stands it on the tail. Well, where the tail was. <laughs> what a start. That was a beautiful job of cross thread right there at the very end. You see why we want this young man back behind the wheel if he's healthy enough. One of the most talented drivers to come along in the last decade is Paul Cohen, and he shows you right there. What a finish. You talk about that wow moment, that exclamation point. Paul had it, and he put it up there. That bar's pretty high right now for everybody else to try and jump over. Yeah, that was a solid, solid start out here. And to think he has not done this in a while, I mean, he, boy, he just fell right back in the groove. Yeah, he really did. Outstanding performance. And it's great to see the reaction of the Atlanta fans. A huge roar, probably second only to the roar that Tom Mintz got in the championship race. Now, we'll get the scores momentarily while you take a look at the replays, my friend. Yeah, here's that cross-thread move. I mean, he just goes up and over, lands it really hard on the back, on the back bars. You can see the rear bumper there completely ripped off. So he landed way hard there. And that can be tough on the body, but that was the big hit right there. I mean, he just plowed the front of that thing into that jump and, and then landed her hard. We see cross-thread moves, but it's pretty rare you see a combination cross-thread move, and that's how Paul Cohen and Monster Mutt wrapped it up. Well, Batman's coming out. The scores, there we go. They threw out the other two, so we're just going to see the four scores. So a 25 is the score. Uh, not sure if he got any bonus times. We know it's a 25 in regulation. So it's a 25 is the regulation score for Paul Cohen. He did get in the bonus time, but he didn't use a lot of it. So we'll wait and find out. John Seesaw. Yeah, John Seesaw. And uh, 
This body cost $18,000 on Batman, and it was always a one-piece body. Now they've actually fabricated it, so it's in a few different sections. So if he does hurt it, and he probably will, <laughs> if they want to buy an entire new body. Seasock has made his name as a two-time world racing champion, but still loves the freestyle. Nice air right there. Gets some great hang time. You know, John, one of the most beloved by the fans uh, as far as drivers in the sport, partially because of all the charity work, the, the make the wish things, all the charities that he works with throughout the year, and, and he loves doing it. But right now, he's probably, he's gonna have to pick up the pace if he wants to uh, take the lead away from Paul Cohen. Nice combination of sky wheelies, but really looking for that wow factor as he gets inside the final. Now you're seeing the clock counting down the final 20 seconds of regulation time for Batman. Lines it up square. I mean, real solid job here. I don't think he's going to win anything here tonight with this one. Now he's picking up the pace a little bit. Well, they kind of have to. You know, they want to survive the clock, and it's just how big can you go early? John kind of started building the momentum. Now he will build the regulation clock. Gets over the school bus. Grabs a bit of a slap wheelie, and he is indeed in bonus time. Yeah, beautiful job there. Working to a jump. He loves the And he did him brilliantly there. And see, that's one thing the judges are looking for. Something the other trucks haven't shown us. John, a seasoned veteran, needless to say, really made a name for himself in 07. He won here and went out for the championships. And you know what? Taking care of both sides of the floor here. One of the things that works for that strategy is the judges are in different parts of the stadium. And that looks like that will bring it to an end for John Seasock and Batman. Down it takes the lead away from Paul Cohen, but a good solid run. Matter of fact, it won't. The regulation time will be a 20, and it appears we're getting two bonus points, so it'll be a 22. All right, there's a good look at the donuts. Look at that left front, that inside tire. No friction there, <laughs> pretty much up in the air, and it is just lighting it up. And those things can be pretty tricky. You know, we talked about this tacky clay out here. If you don't stab that throttle and really get those tires rotating, it'll spit you over on its lid pretty quickly. The awesome Batman machine and John Seasock. Again, the total with two bonus points of 22. Back to live action as we get one more look at Batman. Oh, because Scott, Hartsock, yeah. Scott Hartsock has come out and grabbed himself a wheelie right off the bat. From Bushnell, Florida, Scott Hartsock and the Gunslinger. We talked about no sway bar in the front of that truck. It frees the front of the truck up. He does have a sway bar in the back, so it's a little more stable in the back, a little freer in the front. The fact that he's doing wheel stands out here is pretty impressive, too, because there are zero lugs on those tires. Those tires are heavily buffed, all but gone. It takes a lot of weight off of them, too. Oh, yeah. Nice air, and you can hear the thunder of that huge gunslinger engine. You know, Scott has put a lot of effort. Remember, here's a guy who goes all the way back to the first World Finals back in 2000 when he was one of the big guns. He was the runner-up for that first World Championship. He's kind of had a few years where not quite as aggressive. He wants to get back to the top. That truck looks beautiful. He's a lot into it, and he intends to be coming back to this year's Las Vegas World Finals. There it is. Nice. Slap Willie working right up. Go vertical. Right in the center is a nice double. I think he tried to grab him. He wants that bus stack again. <laughs> He's liking that air. Remember. That one-two combo stuff, I mean, the fans like that because, I mean, he's borderline out of control. He's just kind of going where the truck sends him, but he's got wow. he's got to stick with it. Huge air for the gunslinger as he goes into bonus time. He may get himself a chance at the lead just with the, the level of the air assault he is putting on. Because judges love big air. And he's had some big air. There is no question. I mean, it, I've got to tell you, if he doesn't take the lead here, I'll be surprised. He can finish this thing up hard. He should take the lead. 
Scott Isaac in the gunslinger, filling bonus time, and he has put himself in contention early on in the advanced auto parts monster jam. First ever live freestyle high speed, and he is flat airing it out. Another guy that's in excellent shape, very, very strong man, and keeps himself sharp. You have to, to do this. That's the, the regulation score as he ends up with a 26, so he will grab the lead. Scott Hartzuck gets the lead in Gunslinger, will check his bonus score, and be coming back with more freestyle when we return to Atlanta, live on speed. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, this historic night that launches this huge 2010 year of live action on speed. We're thrilled to get it started for you with the Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam. Let me correct the scoring as we went away. Gunslinger actually was credited with 27 points in regulation, three bonus points for a total of 30. Monster Mother did not get any bonus points. Paul Cohen sits second with a 25, and then Batman ended up with a total of 22. Here comes Chad Fortune and Superman. You spoke about him before in racing. Talk about him playing some college football, also played with the NFL. I mean, this guy looks like Superman. You've never seen him before. He looks like Clark Kent. He is six foot four, devilishly handsome. I mean, just a great looking guy, and the fans love him. Oh, backing up is not a good thing. And it looked like he struggled with a rear steer right there for a moment. I thought he tried to get a turnaround. It looks like it's working now, though. Oh, we just love hearing that big throttle. And again, he's worked with it. You'll hear later, for those of you, again, who may be tuning in, only caught Monster Jam once or twice before. When Tom and Dennis and these guys come out later, that's what you're going to do with that rap, 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 that throttle that they make such a big part of their show as well. Chad doing it a little bit here. You're going to feel that big power. Yeah, it's about rhythm. You want to keep those tires rotating all the time. It's really easy to break something if you don't keep them rotating as well. A little bit of a cross thread angle to that, and he'll combo it up. Nicely done. Beautiful job. Yeah, he's taking it down to his final 15 seconds of regulation time. Unless he really goes out with a wild factor, although there's some sweet air. Not likely to get the lead away from Gunslinger, but he's definitely given these Atlanta fans what they wanted to see, and that is another outstanding freestyle. Oh, a little sideways here. Cross thread. Yep, cross threads it up. We're seeing a lot of that tonight. Bonus time for Chad Fortune and Superman. You know, you mentioned, you know, he is an athlete. There's, there's just no question about that fact. That he even tried his hand in professional wrestling for a little bit, but has really found a home in this Superman truck. The angles our directors and production team are giving us here. You're getting to feel and see what everybody in Georgia is experiencing, and even a few shots like this that are just so sweet from the top of the Georgia Dome. Yeah, it's really cool to watch the suspension go to work on these things, eliminating straps, falling, catching those uh, those differentials as they fall out from underneath the trucks. There's a lot going on in there. He will fill bonus time as well. Nice. Chad Fortune putting on a show. The scores for regulation will be a 20. We'll check what his bonus number is momentarily. Let's take a look at some replays. Chad is just doing an encore for the fans. He's keeping it going just for the fans, Kim. Yeah, I mean, he needed to do that just about 10 seconds ago because that was, this is wild right here. But we're still watching the replay here, but Chad flipped it over. Chad after the run, again, we're watching the replay right here as you see the Superman Ford. Let's go back live because, indeed, he kept going. His run was done. We went to replay, and Chad flips it over. That's a pretty scary moment right here, I mean, for the driver. It. Yeah, we're going to get to see it. The, again, the safety crew best in the business in Monster Jam. Let's take a look. This is, again, after all the scoring, and he just kept going for the fans, and he turns it over on its lid. And after you run one of these things so long, you can see right there, they're just so hot. They're losing fluid. And then that fluid gets on those headers and it ignites. Fire is the worst fear for any driver. This one lights up here pretty quickly, but he does get out. He's and fine. That's why we talked about the remote ignition interrupter, but there is also a safety switch on the back that the officials pull, and that shuts down all the electricals immediately, which helps avoid that. Right here, I mean, that's, that's some pretty wild stuff. That is a 10,000-pound truck, ladies and gentlemen. 
that he just sails up through the air. That right rear just catches that lip and Absolutely. it launched him off to the left. He was catching that lip with the right rear or he'd have kept going. But Chad ends up on his roof. Boy, there he is, and look, he's, he, he almost looks disappointed. He gave these fans a show. Nice job, Chad. He gave them a great show. Wait a minute, are we going to get the well, pose? here we go. We're, We're going to get the pose. pose, baby. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> Gotta love it. Chad Fortune doing his thing at the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Made his home here in Atlanta for several years, so I know he loves coming back. Now, again, when you're throwing out highs and lows, it's going to be a 20. All those four or fives are what will matter. Again, the high score of the six goes out. The low score of the four goes out. And then 20. And uh, as far as bonus points go, he got three bonus points. So it'll be a total of 23. And, boy, that, uh, that body is junk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's another expensive one right there. Whoa. So, Gunslinger remains the leader, but it's Chad Fortune and Superman who's turned this crowd on early on in freestyle for the Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam Series here live on Speed. Well, and I'll tell you, if he would have done what he did at the end of that run just a little bit earlier... Huh? Might have took a leap. Might have been, been oh, absolutely. Yeah. He'd have yeah. been tough to beat here tonight. Yeah, Chad Fortune and Superman really rocking the house. But that's what you expect. And again, we talked about the excitement these drivers were feeling. And I think that was, Ken, partially why a lot of guys made those mistakes in racing. And why I think we saw Tom and Dennis able to channel all the excitement of this live event a little bit better than some of the younger guys. There is such a feeling among the drivers of history tonight of excitement. Not just that this is the 18th time Monster Jam, the Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam Series has been here in Atlanta, but this new chapter live on speed. And, and everybody wants to, to make a name for themselves. Yeah, they've already made names for themselves, but here's your chance to step it up even more. And boy, Chad Fortune just did a great job. Now, Nitro Circus scheduled out next. This truck, Cam McQueen's the driver, the native of Calgary, Alberta, Canada. If you didn't see coverage of last year's Monster Jam NGK Spark Plugs World Finals, this truck entered the event for racing with the Pastrana 199 body on it, and Cam McQueen drove it. After it was eliminated from racing, they went back in the pits. They took the Pastrana 199 body off, put the Nitro Circus body on. Crew Chief Becky McDonough was on top of it. And then they changed drivers. Travis Pastrana himself freestyled this like a wild man. Well, now Cam's back in it. I know Travis is watching. He wants to see his boy go big. I love that they asked some of the drivers some questions here earlier today. And one of them was, how long have you been driving? He put a total of... Two minutes and 37 seconds. <laughs> I think two hours and 37 minutes actually is what he meant to go with, including intros. He's he's plenty of character. Cam McQueen, again, as we mentioned, his crew chief, one of the only female crew chiefs in the business, or in the sport, and we're seeing more and more come into it. I mean, no. oh, look at this. Beautifully done by Cam McQueen, but again, Lori Evans has been a crew chief on the the dance truck, the, uh, the destroyer for years. But Becky McDonough went through training like they have at the at, at UTI and other technical schools. Got it. Was able to get on this team. Kind of hooked up first to Estrada 199. Is now part of the Nitro Circus team. And Cam McQueen loves having her work in his truck. Listen to that. The gearing sounds a little bit different than that. That or the chip that they have in that engine is a little bit lower in RPM. I don't see him getting twice the speed that we saw, for example, out of, out of Scott's truck. Kind of a mini donut version. Didn't get into it like Batman did. And that's the danger of doing a move somebody else did. If you don't do it as well, so the judges are going to probably mark you down a little bit. I did like his cross thread going the other way. There's no question. This guy has some talent. He was very good at racing there. Unfortunately, made a mistake, but was very fast. Now a little cross thread he's, action. Yeah, he, he likes this angle. He likes coming through. What he's finding is a valley right next to that car where he can launch, and he's landing on that ramp. So it looks good, but it's not putting him in peril. He's down to his final 20 seconds. Here's a good look at how that is uh, actually created a double. There's a little valley right there in the center of that obstacle. 
Oh boy, here we go. Watch the landing here. Nice. Nicely done. Yep. One more. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Cam McQueen in oh, Nitro Circus nice. sets it down as he fills the regulation clock and goes into bonus time. I don't know. I'm glad I'm not a judge because it's just going to keep getting tougher and tougher to pick out. Well, Who's the winner as this thing goes on? That was just perfect. I mean, he stuck the landing there. Look at the donuts across the, the same, floor. Our two newest trucks there, the Iron Man and the Advanced Auto Parts Grinder, are the ones he's dirty enough. Yeah. <laughs> and a perfect place to park it. Big roar from the fans in Atlanta for Canadian Cam McQueen in Travis Pastrana's Nitro Circus. Solid, solid run. Don't know if it's enough to get Gunslinger, but I like it. A really good effort. No doubt Cam's got a bright future here. Looks like a 23 in regulation. And the bonus score is uh, two, I believe, so that'll be a 25. Still, our leader will remain Scott Hartsock and Gunslinger. And I've got to say, I mean, the judges have had this very, very close, but every one of these has been yeah. very similar. I mean, it's they've all been very solid. Another look at him doing the donuts here and, again, unloading that inside front tire and squatting down there in the rear. Watch this here, up and over the bus, and just nails that landing perfectly. Randy Moore brings out the War Wizard as freestyle continues. Live for the first time ever on speed. Randy, a former drag racer in the pro mod category. That's where he has that big power from. 572 cubic inch power plant. We talked about it before. Keep black motor. 1,800 horsepower. You know, if you live in Bristol, Tennessee, you've got to race something. Yeah. <laughs> He's come a long ways over the past few oh, years. I mean, oh. He really has. Last year, he got his first invitation to the NGK Spark Plugs World Finals and was just absolutely thrilled. And I think the industry was because he earned it. He's put the effort in, has worked his way up. And Randy got himself in the spot. Now, that's a negative. The judges are instructed to deduct if you back up and are not doing a move in reverse. So that'll probably cost him a point. So I'm turning there. I did not see the rear tires turn. He was struggling trying to get that thing turned. I wonder if the rear steer is broken on it. By the way, let me break some news in case uh, yeah, the fans are The rear steer is broke on that truck. So yeah. that's why he's struggling. He has to back up. He okay. can, and that's exactly just, sorry, Scott. To, to give you a good example, that is why they have to have the rear steer on the truck. Randy's going to keep going. Just wanted to get in real quick. We mentioned the NGK Spark Plug World Final. They start the process of putting that field together tonight. And no surprise, Dennis Anderson was the first to be invited and be presented with his flag. So we know Anderson and Gregor. Oh! Back. Look at that. The wheel's broken off. It's kind of suspended <laughs> on its side and then goes over. <laughs> oh, my. Randy Moore and the War Wizard. Almost perfectly balanced there with the three wheels left on it. He just snapped that thing right off there. It looks like yeah. at the I, I think for, at the knuckle it might be outside a little closer to the end of the hub. I think for oh, a few minutes right here at the knuckle. He was defying laws of gravity, several of them. And he talked about not breaking any rules. There he is, Randy Moore and the War Wizard. Blew the engine in that truck a week ago in Montgomery, Alabama, trying to get ready for this event. So he had to do a little more work than he thought but came out and gave us a show in freestyle. Problem is, he didn't fill the clock and, and won't get the kind of score he had hoped for, so there'll be no bonus time. Cam, let's take a look at the replays, though, because he was going for it. Yeah, up and over there, and all the weight landed on that right front, and when it landed, he had it turned to the right a little bit, so it just put it in such a violent bind, it had no choice but to snap it off. We are talking about some big, heavy, thick iron. Oh. One of those differentials weighing in with the wheels and tires on it, around 3,000 pounds. So you can see after they throw out the high and the low, it'll be a 24 of his scores coming in there for Randy Moore and the War Wizard, who I think is standing by with Mark Schrader. Mark, you ready? Take a look at this, Randy Moore. About 10 seconds ago, you were upside down in that truck. We look at it as they're riding it upside down, from upside down, right side up. A broken spindle is what caused that rollover. Randy, what an awesome freestyle tonight. What are you thinking? What were your thoughts through that freestyle? Live Speed TV. That War Wizard was going to put on a show. I come down here to Atlanta. I've always had bad luck. I wanted to get big air and make this crowd happy because this is my home track. So for speed. That's what I wanted to do. 
Absolutely, you got the big ear. It was fantastic. Your fans obviously here. You call it hometown. This is big stuff for you. You gave it to them. What a great night for you. Hey, I appreciate it. I've got my family out here. I've got all my friends and people back in Bristol, Tennessee that support me. And man, I just want to tell you, it can't be done without them. Thank you very much. Live on speed. That's what he wanted. And that's what he did. Randy Moore and War Wizard gets the acknowledgement of the cheers of the crowd and now he'll head back and take his truck back to the pits well we're not even halfway through freestyle yet gunslinger leads it but there's a lot more spectacular action to come when we return to atlanta and it's coming up next back in atlanta's georgia dome the history of our first ever live televised advanced auto parts monster jam on speed continues with gunslinger your leader you can see Monster Mud and Nitro Circus both had scores of 25, but in all honesty, the focus is on who's in that number one spot. And right now, it's Scott Hartsock and the Gunslinger. Six have completed their runs, as you can see, a total of 14 are here. So eight more to go with the debut of the Iron Man truck scheduled to be coming out next. This is one I'm really looking forward to. Uh, it is a brand new piece, and it is a piece that just looks spectacular. Lee O'Donnell is a guy who we know can get the job done. Now, Lee O'Donnell has a lot of racing experience. We talked about that before and loves driving these monster trucks. A brand new piece here, brand new body. Kind of resembles uh, 33 Willys, if you will, in the very front of it, the grill of it, but it's unique. Never seen another one like it, man. Now, now if you uh, are a fan of watching Speed, as we know you are, because you're here with us tonight and you've watched some other series. Yeah, you've seen that name come up before because Lee O'Donnell, a very accomplished off-road racer as well. But uh, and he's thrilled to be able now to apparently be getting more and more Monster Jam work. For the last few years, he has been the ultimate hired gun. But let's go ahead and go down to Mark Schrader from trackside. Mark, take it away. Scott Hartzog. Gunslinger, cock locked and ready to rock, live on speed. This is reminiscent of World Finals 1. I haven't seen that big air in a long time. Absolutely. You know, I knew I was going to have to come out here cock locked and ready to rock due to the fact that I didn't race like I used to. Didn't have the motor I had underneath me, but I got to say thanks to Headman Hustle Header, my wife, Kathy, Michael, Jeff, everybody in the shop for help keeping that thing going. And you know what? It ain't over yet because we got Detroit, we got Tampa, we got Orlando. Tampa again, Jacksonville. Man, we can, we're on a roll. We're going to go big all year long. There you go. You got it from our time. Leo O'Donnell going big right now in Iron Man. Ken, what do you think of that piece? I, I mean, it's awesome. It's, it's beautiful and definitely different. I mean, you're always yeah. looking for something different. Yeah, definitely. Love to see the excitement of Scott Hartzog again. He, he seems to have found a new energy, but can he hold the lead against this kind of talent? Because he knows the biggest guns in the game are coming after him. Look at Leo Donald Sky. That wheelie just a moment ago. Not only was he doing a wheelie, he had to have presence of mind to bang that thing in the second gear as well. Got it in second gear, but a little bit late. It was up on the chip for a moment. I'm going to have to ask Lee if he hasn't learned by now. When you put working lights in an advanced auto parts monster jam machine, they don't work the whole lights. Already, <laughs> one of them's already out. <laughs> you sail one of these things as far as they do, and they land as hard as they land. If the lights are not happy. Final 10 seconds of regulation time upcoming for Leo Donnell and Iron Man. His maiden freestyle voyage, not just on speed, but anywhere. This is a brand new truck, its first run. Nice job on the Sky Wheelie. That's how you're supposed to position it. Yeah, I mean, the first time he ever sat in that truck was when he drove it out on the floor today. Pretty amazing. So they've been adjusting on those shocks, I'm sure, to get that thing dialed in, and it looks great. Lee O'Donnell and Iron Man gets it into bonus time. Looking for maximum points. Boy, he... Man. I think what we're seeing, and we're going to watch what Lee's scores are, these judges want the big air. Right now, Scott Hartzog has the lead because of the big air. And I think Lee's got a shot at it as he fills bonus time. I mean, people in the mezzanine level, they're all looking at him eye to eye. He was just airing that thing out. He fills the time. Now, the regulation score is a 21, so not quite what he wanted and certainly won't be enough to get him the lead. Can I look at that bonus score while you look at the replay? 
Yeah, one more time, and we you can't talk about it enough. It's just huge air, and again, Leo Donald's come so far. That's that really I was talking about, slap really had to go from first to second gear in midstream. I mean, there's a lot going on inside of that truck to remember to reach down there and take care of the shifting as well. Sets it back down nicely. I mean, never rolled the truck over, put on a great show, used every inch of the floor and every obstacle that was out there, did his job here tonight. 21 points in regulation, as you saw before we went to the replays. Two bonus points from the bonus judge. And again, the bonus judge is just one judge who can offer up to five points. It's a total of 23 for Iron Man. So Scotty Hartsock keeps dodging bullets as Gunslinger has the lead. But here is a driver who a lot of people think is going to win a world title someday. The up and coming Alex Blackwell in a truck that Pablo Huffmaker drove to the 2007, or at least the name of the truck and the body styling. The captain's curse team, Pablo Huffaker, won his only world championship, not driving a Grave Digger truck, but driving captain's curse. And I think he has a great combo on here for freestyle, and he has some huge lugs on the rear of that truck. They are buffed to a sharp point, an edge. I mean, this thing should get some mad grip if he can get it going. And he's already rolled it over once tonight, so he's not worried about hurting the body anymore. Not that he was in the first place anyway. Yeah, there's those lugs we were talking about. I mean, they are gigantic and buffed on one side, so. 1941 sharp. Willys is the body model here. With a hole in <laughs> yeah, there's a little grip. Standing still, wheel stands in the dirt. From Crackville, Pennsylvania, Alex Blackwell and Captain's Curse. Coming out with some nice momentum, going move to move. Again, one of the things the judges are going to look for is a flow. And air. How about that? Pretty much handled the double. Went ramp to ramp on that one. Got a little bit of a back car, but they're smashed out so much. That one's going to hurt us. I think what you're going to see, I mean, this is, this is a solid effort, don't get me wrong, but I think you're going to see some trucks here towards the end of freestyle that will hit that double in the center of the floor and never even come close to the second stack because they'll have so much speed. And I think that's what's going to take to impress the judges or something like that. Now, watch this. Look at him walking across the bus. That'll impress the judges. Yeah, they'll love that. And that's a flat dirt wall that he just went up right there. I mean, we're talking about a flat dirt wall that is probably the better part of six foot tall. From the roof of the Georgia Dome, you're looking at Alex Blackwell and Captain's Curse down to his final 20 seconds of regulation time. Nice momentum. He had a nice flow to this one for sure. No wasted time. Stands it up. This will be the move that completes his regulation time. Our clock counts to zero. That means we are in oh, bonus time. Yeah! There's a ball. Save, save it. He saves it. And the fans come to their feet. And you the, see what that does to him? That sparks him as a driver, man. It just puts him on a whole nother level. To this point, the save of the night from Alex Black. Oh, he's firing t-shirts up in the crowd. If you pay attention, this one has a t-shirt cannon located right behind the cab, and he'll squeeze a little button, and it'll send a t-shirt up in the air. Alex Blackwell putting on a show in Captain's Curse. A nice regulation run. Fills it. And then goes into bonus time. And as you mentioned, even adds a few more Captain's Curse fans with some new Captain's Curse teachers. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a great presence of mine, too, when you're out there. Yeah. What's the teacher cannon button? Nice scores. A 28. This is going to come nice. down to bonus time. Very Can he good. get more than two bonus points to take the lead? Gunslinger has a 30. <laughs> has to kick the door <laughs> open. <laughs> Well, the fans are going to give this guy a well-deserved round of applause. And he is the new leader. Three bonus points, a 31 in captain's curse. Alex Blackwell takes the lead. Another look at it here, man. He really got after it right here. Up and over that large jump. It kicked him sideways to the left and back to the right. Somehow managed to save it. The biggest way to save these things is to keep tapping that throttle, man. Keep working that throttle, keep those tires rotating, and hopefully it goes in your favor. Up that six-foot face right there of dirt. And here's another look at it. Just grazes the top of that thing. What a beautiful job.
We got a couple more looks at it for you, Canner. Are you having fun with all these replays? Our <laughs> crowd crew's doing a great job you know at what? giving you all the toys. You know what? I hope the fans at home are having fun because this they is are. some great stuff. A lot of cameras out here. Our crew doing a spectacular job. And, of course, the drivers, they're delivering. Once we finally got Alex out of the truck, he's able to come take a bow. What a performance. And Alex Blackwell, an emerging superstar, takes the lead by one point over Scott Hartsock and Gunslinger. And uh, you can see right there, he's headed for the hot seat. He is your leader. That's how tight this competition is. Captain's Curse grabs a one-point advantage over Gunslinger. And we now are just a little past the halfway point. Some of the biggest guns in the game, though, are still to come. And one of them is the guy we've been calling the bridesmaid. He wants to break out of it. George Bellhan, it seems like every time you turned around last year, was finishing second. He finished second here a year ago when Dennis Anderson won freestyle in Great Digger. In December in Minneapolis, he was the winner for the Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam. He beat Dennis, but he didn't beat Lindsey Wink, and he finished second again. George watched this one, and here comes Escalade. I hope he has a truck to get it done here tonight. Keep in mind, Mark said that the transmission was leaking some fluid a little bit earlier, so they might have had enough time to change it. Great on for here for suspension. That's the jam cam showing it to you. The yellow straps, you see there are limiting straps. That keeps the suspension from falling so far down. That would rip. There you go. And it was maxed out right there. It would rip the shock apart. And obviously, uh, the, the rest of the differential will come completely out of it, so. The leader of Monster Jam's Mohawk Nation, George Bellham, from the Chicago, Illinois area. You can really check out with this camera angle the great look of the neon lights they shot. You already talked about the spinners. But great big, overhead shot there. there from the center of the dome. Yep. Cross yeah. thread, cross thread. Yeah, and yeah, that's what he just did. I mean, he he knows. He knows what to do to score points. You can't be conventional. Down to about 30 seconds, so he's filling the clock with action. Another cross thread. I mean, I have not seen so many cross threads over a bus early on in the competition before. But again, we knew everybody wanted to make a big impression here on, on Speed Live, and they're doing it. I think hats off to the track crew. I mean, they put this together perfectly. They really gave these guys something to work with tonight. And, and let's, let's, let's expand the new track construction crew, along with the officials. Put a great, great oh. job. He's doing wheelies in the middle of a donut. That might be the first time I've ever seen that. What? I'm not sure what to call that. We'll have to think about that one as we go into bonus time. A wheelie George bell can. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, that might work. George Bell. It, it, it looked like uh, part of the part of the sway bar. Broken front sway bar here flopping around. And over he goes. Yeah. That's normally going to be the result when you get yourself in that spot. And a little bit of a flash fire, the crew coming out, and uh, they'll get that put out. George Bellhand turns him on. He did get into bonus time, but won't get many bonus points, Ken, and it's gonna be hard to get the lead away from Captain's Curse. Great show, though. Great driving yeah. job out of him. He Truck has become, up. Yeah, I'm sorry, Ken, but he has become one of the preeminent freestylers in the sport today. Very comfortable. I mean, he comes out of the quad wars. He was used to hanging it out there. He really knew how to ride. Great balance, great hand-eye coordination. Well, 27 regulation points. I just don't see four bonus points being there as we'll wait for the bonus judge's number to come in. He did not fill all of it. He'll get two bonus points. So 29 will put him in the third place. It's still Captain's Curse 1, Gunslinger 2, Escalade 3. The safety crew has to be careful when he's getting out of that truck. He can now, poke an eye out. With watch that, this. With that mohawk. George <laughs> has been known to take the shirt off of his back and give it to somebody in the stands, and that's what he's pointing, and a lot of his fans know that. Who wants the shirt off George Bellhead's back? Well, that's what he's trying to figure out right here. <laughs> he's a showman, too. He, you're right. I mean, he has turned into such a great driver. Listen to this crowd. Oh, they love it. They love it. And again, we see more and more of the youngsters showing up in Mohawks, and that warms George's heart at every Bill Ford Tough Party in the pits we go to. Yeah, he's found a section that he can yeah. get to, that, that, that wants that shirt. And so, they all have, a lot of these guys have a routine that they do when they get out of the truck, and these fans know it. Yeah. 
You just see some more to come, by the way. Yeah. We're not finished. He's got to go underneath the... Now, uh, this is something that George <laughs> does. All this plastic is safety holds mandated by the USHRA, the sanctioning body for the Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam Tour. Nothing can be in those areas. It's all about safety for the competitors and for the fans. So it makes it tough. Well, George says, I'll just sneak my way underneath all that. Well, he's way up in the stands, too. He has his eye on somebody. He found a young man to give that shirt to. George oh, Bell Mohawk working on the little little young man right there. So, <laughs> And Escalade, Ken, here comes some replays for you that we're going to take a look at. And again, for George, it was just one of those things. Once the, once the sway bar broke, he's kind of flopping around. Yeah, and you could see how much looser that, that front end got as soon as that sway bar broke. But, you know, he was cross threading the entire time. He did a lot of different stuff. He took a different approach, and it worked for him here tonight. The leader remains Captain's Curse and Alex Blackwell trying to take it, but we've got some great trucks still to come. Don't go away. We are coming right back to Atlanta live on speed. Hey everyone, I'm Lindsey Wink, driver of the Built for Tough Blue Thunder Monster Truck. Go into MonsterDunMainStreet.com right now and register to win your very own Ford truck and me in your backyard the summer of 2010. We've been to Illinois, we've been to North Carolina, we've been to Texas. I want to come to your backyard. So get online now, MonsterDunMainStreet.com. Get your registration in. I'll see you in the summer of 2010. There you get a look at the built Ford Tough Blue Thunder. Lindsey Wink talking about one of the most fun promotions because somebody's getting a new Ford F-150 and that backyard barbecue. And uh, again, we'll talk more about that. And again, all the promotions, whether they're with Advance, Auto Parts, Ford, whoever, MonsterJam.com is kind of your, your center to go there. You can go to SpeedTV.com while you're there. I mean, it clicks you and takes you to everything. And you can get tickets to upcoming events like the World Finals. you got to come join us in Vegas for the biggest event in Monster Jam, March 27th. We'd love to have you there. It is a monster truck event like no other. Like no other. Here we go, and there's the website, monsterjam.com. Real simple. Lupe Sosa brings out the advanced auto parts grinder. It's second run. He debuted in Minneapolis last month. And this truck just looks great, and Lupe's such a great fit. I mean, I was talking to some of the folks with advanced auto parts. He signed autographs for, I believe, it was like 3,500 dealers. He's just such a great representative for them. They love this relationship, but now they want to see him deliver on the track. They're trying some new stuff on this truck, too. We talked about the suspension falling out and those limiting straps. Well, they also are taking care of some of that fallout with the shocks. They're actually putting the accumulators on the bottom of the shock now, and it actually helps control that 3,500-pound differential I was talking about when it's falling down. Do it under control. Oh, my. Beautifully done. I mean, it's just the smoothness of the leap. Oh, hang on, Luby. Oh, oh, no, no. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. Oh, oh, he tried. He tried, he tried. He tried. Oh, I thought it was going to roll back again. Oh, what a disappointment with 25 seconds left on the regulation clock, and he almost had it. But the 2004 World Freestyle Champion, unable to fill the clock, gives the fans a thrill, but just, you could just see it coming. He got himself kind of in an area there that you're not going to be able to get away with. Yeah, I, I promise you, he will be very disappointed here. He wanted to do way more than that. And, you know, he's one of the guys, one of the wow moments of all time that I think of at the World Finals. When he launched that truck, I mean, he just shredded it. It fell apart in pieces. So he has zero fear when he's inside of that thing. And remember when he launched it, Bounty Hunter had been left there as an obstacle. He literally sailed between the wheels of Bounty Hunter before he ended up crashing and, and, and breaking that thing up. What a moment that was, you're right. The scores are going to be low. Yeah, you can see that the judges didn't have a whole lot they could do. It's a total of 17, but obviously a big hand from the Atlanta fans who love Lupe Sosa here. First time driving the Advanced Auto Parts Grinder. And right there on the, on the side of that jump, I mean, that big, huge pile of dirt. We talked about that face of that wall being six foot, but if you get to the highest part, of that pile of dirt there, that jump, that ramp, if you will. I mean, we're talking about 15 feet up, so that thing is uh, its very tall. And if you get to the side of it, it just rolled him over. He had nothing to do. He was off to a great start. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. looked like it was going to be an awesome show, but yeah. he just got thrown a curveball right there, nothing he could do. Well, look, and look, Kent, it's just right here was where it, 
thought because the cab actually hit up on the top of that mound, it might come back, but you he know, just didn't have enough. Looking at this one more time, something else the fans at home should know, the rear end is a spool. It's a positive, but the front is open. So he hit the throttle. He did what he was supposed to do, but because it has an open front differential, the right front spun because there had no friction there. Well, Lupe and his team having a discussion about it. Captain's curse, Alex Blackwell. Will he be able to make the history of being our first live on speed freestyle winner? He's there right now with the lead by one point over Gunslinger, Escalade, the Mutt, Nitro Circus, War Wizard, Iron Man, as you've seen, and then Batman and Grinder, and uh, rounding out that 10th uh, spot. And of course, for Grinder, not able to fill the clock going over too early. It's going to reflect on the score. And, you know, Loopy's not going to worry about that. He wanted a lot more, so he's going to get ready. And he's going to head up into the stands. In the meantime, let's check back in the hot seat. Mark Schrader, I believe, is hanging out with Alex Blackwell. Alex Blackwell says, I want to go sit in the seat. I want to sit in the seat. I said, well, go sit in the seat. He says, I've never sat and I've never been in the lead. Now you're here, buddy, with a 31. Yeah, it's great. You know, I'm at all these shows and I see it and I never want to sit in it. Just because, you know, it might be bad luck in my mind. Um, you know, I had a, everybody said it was a decent run. I won't know until I see it. You know, yeah, hopefully everybody at home DVR'd it for me. You know, it's been great. Uh, I rolled over in racing, but, you know, I came back for freestyle. Howie, my crew guy, and all my help back there got it back together, and we came back for a good run. Redemption is good with a score of 31. He's sitting live in the hot seat. Back to you guys in the booth. He mentioned Howie. That's Howie Dalton, his crew chief, who uh, also has been doing duty on the Batman truck here. So Howie, a busy guy down in the pits. The captain's curse, the leader with a 31, but we are now ready for the youngest world champion in Monster Jam history. It's Adam Anderson and Taz. And he's looking to redeem himself here. I guarantee you he was very frustrated in the race. This kid is definitely a chip off the old Watch out, hang on, hang on. Hang on, baby. Nice. <laughs> Boy, he got himself on that ragged edge, which is where Adam likes to be. Benny will tell you, one of the keys to him winning that 08 World Championship were his amazing saves. Holy smokes. And he finds awesome. a way. He finds a way to pull this thing out of spots that you just don't think he can do it. Look at that air. That's what I was talking yeah. about. Clearing that second stack. I mean, just huge speed right there. You were on the money there. We're going to see more doing just that. Listen to his throttle rhythm, the way he learned from his dad. In a bit of a spot, but he's making the turns. He wants to stay away from the wall protection. He gave up a little momentum, but he didn't have to back up. You see the clock counting us down the regulation. The momentum and the speed that he's carrying out here has already surpassed everybody else that's come out. Look at that. I mean, standing on the throttle. And that's the way where he's got to check up a little bit because he doesn't have a lot of landing. Don't you love these onboards? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> he will fill regulation oh, time. Oh, no. <laughs> He plants it <laughs> right as we come to the end of regulation time. There won't be any bonus scores, but that may be enough to get the lead. I told you that was a flat face wall right there of dirt, and he hit wow. it hard. <laughs> what a performance from Adam Anderson and Taz showing everybody at home and here in the Georgia Dome just how he became the 2008 World Freestyle Champion, the youngest ever in the sports history. Wow. Yeah, he wanted to come out here and give these fans a treat oh. of show because he struggled in racing. He knows it, but he came out here where he's comfortable and made it happen. I think Daddy's proud of that one. Daddy oh, yeah. happened in the racing. The scores are 32. Without oh, yeah. any bonus points, you got a new leader. Listen to this crowd. They love it. Make no mistake about it. There's the future of the Vance Allen Barge Monster Jam right there. Not just in him, in the likes of Alex Blackwell we've seen and David Bradshaw and some of these others. But this kid leads the charge. He's taking it forward. Yeah, he's a young man, very, very talented. Watched his father do it for so long. He listened, he watched, he learned, came out here. He's been a part of it since he was born. And his brother debuts this year, Ryan, Ryan Anderson. Absolutely. There will now be three Andersons driving. Let's go to the replays here. All right, now you're seeing a replay here of Taz. Mark Schrader, though, has caught up with Adam Anderson. Mark, take it away. 
He now has a score of 32 points. Let me remind you fans, that is without bonus points. He did this on pure, raw, unadulterated horsepower. No nitrous. He didn't get a bonus point. He has the lead. You know what? That's great. I was pitiful in racing. I can't believe it. I rolled over. So I figured, you know what? We're going to start it out strong. Worked out well for me. I wish I would have toenailed it. I bet I could have backflipped it right there. But what it's all about is these guys right here. Now it's about all the people at home because it's right now, right here. This is going down, and it's awesome. We're having a great time here. Adam Anderson, the hot seat is all yours. We're going back to you guys up in the booth. <laughs> I'm busy watching I, that. I, I hope Adam was watching that last angle because I, I, that was making me dizzy too. Man. How does he come out of that stuff? Look and he's that. right. You know, he's talking about you know hitting that a little differently. He might have been able to pull off a backflip. I don't know. And you know, well, there's a couple trucks that yet to come that might try that stuff. Well, you wonder again. We saw Tom Mintz backflip a truck, although it did hit on the roof, not a clean backflip. And Arnold Holland during a competition. Then last year at the Monster Jam NGK Sparkles World Finals, Tom did on the special stunt, not in competition, a complete backflip. Well, who knows? But that's actually a piece of the task truck that Adam's going to give to a Monster Jam fan. How about that? Yeah, he'll autograph that, and somebody will take that home and hang it up, and they'll, they'll remember that forever. It's a great memory. It's one of the teeth, by the way. For those of you <laughs> watching at home who haven't come out to a Monster Jam event live, you're seeing why there's going to be more than 250,000 people at Monster Jams and other film motorsports events this weekend because of this. Who else does this? Takes part in your truck, goes up into the crowd, they're going to find a fan to give it to. It's just part of the whole Advanced Auto Parts Monster Jam experience. And boy, you can see Adam loves it with the fans too. And that's a big thing. See the Grave Digger fans come up there? It's been important to Adam to, to try to appeal to his dad's fan while making his own. And I think he's done a good job. But let's get back to action because here comes Lindsey Wink in that built Ford Tough Blue Thunder in our kind of unofficial winter season opener in Minneapolis last month. This was your freestyle winner. So let's see if he can make it two in a row. Got a house-built truck here. Again, we talked about the lower center of gravity a little bit earlier on. This is one of those trucks that has that. This, it also has very light tires on it. If you take a look at these lugs, every other lug has been cut off. And it helps him do that right there. We like to say announce your presence, young man, and he has done just that. We're on board with the Advanced Auto Parts Jam Camp. You can see the drive shaft looped down in there. If you looked at, at that onboard, it's protecting that drive shaft, keeping it located in case something were to happen there. Obviously, the shocks on either side by those limiting straps. There's a lot going on there. The four link rear suspension. Take a look at all those moving parts. some of these others we've seen it's just no doubt that that's the biggest jump of the night and yet that sets the bar when you consider the two guys uh, who are still to come yeah well and, and i'll tell you man it, the way he was going he, he did that a couple more times that truck stayed together we would have had a new leader once again man nobody has hit the, has hit a jump like that wide open yet tonight he just did it he got a total of 30 for his regulation, so he did not match Taz. And obviously, I haven't seen the bonus points. He did go in the bonus time, but it doesn't look like he's been given any bonus points. 
So let's take a look at some replays. Ken, take a look here. That was it, man. That's the big one. He's going to land on the front, but probably predominantly on the left front. But really, I mean, it was pretty even. It was just so much speed, so much momentum. And that 10,000-pound truck turns into a 50, 60, 70,000-pound truck when it lands right there. Just, I mean, do you see the size of these differentials up close and personal? A 3,500-pound hunk of iron, and it just mangles it like it's butter. Maybe to put it a different way from what you just said, that's actually kind of taking a quarter million truck and making a jump. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there is a, there's a, let's watch this. Look at the suspension. Listen. And they work that throttle right there as well. They want to keep those tires rotating. Oh. Usually it'll help save the truck, but nothing was going to save that one. Man, I, 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 you know, I'm jealous right now of the people at home who have those big stadium sound systems oh, with yeah. their televisions <laughs> catching this. You're seeing it in HD live, and you're hearing that kind of sound. Lindsey Wink going up, and he's got one of those very popular built for tough flags that a lot of folks like taking home. He's given one to one of his fans. Well, down there with the broken wheel, I think, is Mark Schrader. Mark, what do you got? Check this out. Let me show you the type of carnage that kind of air will get you. This is a three-quarter inch bolt right here, sheared completely off. You can see that these bolts here have pulled the threads completely out of the rear end. And what's happened is we pan over here. This is the tie rod right here. This is a one-inch bolt right here that the tie rod attaches to, and this is a hydraulic ram. This is an amazing amount of carnage here, all in one inch bolts, three quarter inch bolts. Back to you guys in the booth. You know, that's one of the reasons Mark Schrader is a part of this team. He's right in the middle of it, knows it, lived it, drives it, and right now, he knows as well as we do that Taz is your leader with that score of 32, one point better than Captain's Curse. Blue Thunder got 30, but again, early in bonus, Clearly, the bonus judge isn't going to give you points if you don't fill the bonus time. That's what we're seeing here, and he got no bonus points. So Lindsey was in the game, and he sure turned these fans on, Ken. You know what Mark Schrader was thinking? He was thinking, I'm really glad I don't have to write a check for that. Ah, <laughs> uh, you think? Because <laughs> he's written plenty of them for it, but yeah, I mean, it's just huge stuff. And that's, this is exactly what we expect to see out here on a huge floor, large obstacles, and the best in the business. And then there were two. It is time for Tom Mentz and Maximum Destruction. Ken, let's just sit back and enjoy for a minute. Stadium waved to everybody. Now here it comes. is 10 years old. Oh, and uh, I'm beginning to think that rear steer is broke, actually. Yeah, that, that, that's broke. It's not coming back to center. But he pulled it back down. He got in trouble. This is vintage Mets right here. Tom Mets will do more with a broken truck than most mortals will do with one at the 100%. And look at him do it right now. It's very difficult for him to make a right-hand turn. In fact, I don't think he can even make a right-hand turn. So he has to do the best he can do with what he has to work with. Before, it was all left-handed loops. Now he's gone all the way back across the floor to try to get started again. Tom is spectacular, but remember, this may cost him a double down. Maybe not. <laughs> Man. 
He stands on the throttle. This place is going bonkers. And Nobody. there's the scores. He's got the lead, a 36 for Mintz. Nobody in the Georgia Dome is sitting down now. Wow. I can't believe that engine stayed together. He matted the throttle when he thought he was going to lose it. And I mean, every last RPM that thing could provide, it was doing. I'm sitting there thinking that the truck's brought, that the truck is broke. How is he going to get to a chance for that double down? He's got it. Dennis Anderson's got to top that. But what gives Dennis a bit of an opening is one bonus time, because Tom didn't get there, and two, if he can keep his piece together. But right now, we know what this is about. He is a happy camper. If you have never seen Tom Mentz in action before, well then, you're about to see why Tom is one of those popular drivers ever with young fans who like to wear helmets to bed. Yes, absolutely. And by the way, what do they call this place? The, the house, house that, that Mentz built. built. Yeah. <laughs> This is exactly why, and he will. He will find a Max D fan up there, and somebody's going to get a helmet. I, I often wonder about after they get the helmet, because he usually smacks it one time just to make yeah. sure it's on good. <laughs> the resiliency of this man and this team after a very tough 2009. You know, if he hadn't won the World Racing Championship last year, 2009 would be considered the worst year of his career. He struggled, struggled, struggled. Then went to Minneapolis a month ago and was broke all night, left spiking his helmet, not giving it to a fan, but spiking it into the floor. But that team didn't get down. They went back and they went to work and they brought Tom a piece that has put him in a position to double down. All right, he's up in the crowd making tracks. He has his eyes on somebody, so yeah. some... Oh, look at that go bigger, go home sign. Is that the one he's looking for? It might be. Because that's his trademark saying, go big or go home. I think that's where he... Yep, that is where he's going. <laughs> this young man's going to get himself a maximum destruction helmet. Yeah. <laughs> that is just too cool. Again, you just don't see this anywhere other than in an advanced auto parts monster jam events, and that's what's so much fun. Well, here's the leaderboard. Oh, wait a minute. They did give him bonus points. I didn't think he got into bonus time. I stand corrected. I apologize, fans. That's a total of 40. So now it is going to be a tough, real tough road for Dennis Anderson to hold. He has got to bring it. He's got to fill the clock, and he's got to get into bonus time. Listen, trademark song. Well, fans, we're going to sit back with you and watch this one. points he's got to get a perfect score our Tom Mance has doubled down as spectacular as that was I don't think he can win and the bigger fans aren't gonna like that oh <laughs> man wow how spectacular was that final leap? breathtaking is what that final leap was he aired that thing out Look at Tom. as big as we've ever seen I think Tom knows he's got it unless there's four tens come up out of the judges 
Tom Metz has doubled down. But we'll have to wait to see. There's Dustin Brown, crew chief for the Grave Digger, who's in there taking care of his, his driver. So they were taking a look, and, and again, the safety crews, the first thing they do, check the driver out, check things over. The scores, again, he matched him in regulation in a 36. But because Max D got four bonus points, and look at the confetti coming out of the sky, it's just part of this night of history right here, and you're a part of it. And remember, we're not done. We've got three and a half more hours of coverage coming up as we go out to Anaheim in a moment. But right now, we're going to Mark Schrader. Tom, we're on live television on speed. You said you had one thing left to do. You said double down. You did it, my friend. Oh, I know it. It's Atlanta, Georgia, man. There's such good luck here. These people are so crazy. I drive so hard. And all the Master Jam fans back at home. We had a horrible Minneapolis to start the year. But right now, Randy Lambert, Mark Cole, Tom Mintz, we're back in the game. Woo! Double down, eight-time world champion Tom Mintz in maximum destruction here for the first time ever, Atlanta Live, and you're watching it exclusively on speed. Scott and Ken up at the booth, what a night we've had. Yeah, Mark, but you should know better Woo! to turn your yeah. back on Mintz. <laughs> He's wound wow. up, man. He's wound up. And Mark Cole and Brandon Lambert, his crew, as happy as anybody in the place. What a spectacular start. Tom Mintz and Maximum Destruction doubles down on this spectacular night. We're going to come back to wrap up, and then be ready to go to Anaheim for the great Supercross action. Back in Atlanta in just a moment on speed. Speed's coverage of Monster Jam Live from Atlanta has been brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. Keep the wheels turning. By Ford, the Ford F-150 built Ford tough. And by Magnaflow Exhaust Products. Quality, power, sound. Ken, what a night. Take a look at the scores quickly. Yeah, maximum destruction coming out here, just making it happen. And of course, Grave Digger right there, just didn't get into the bonus time. Tom Mintz able to grab the victory as you look at all the scores. We want to thank each and every one of you for being a part of this history speed live coverage of Monster Jam. Remember, all Monster Jam roads lead to the NGK Spark Plus World Finals in Las Vegas, the official destination of Monster Jam. Our thanks to everybody. A great job by the crew. Phenomenal work by our camera people. But most of all, we thank the great sponsors and you Monster Jam fans for making this entire night possible. And stay tuned. There's a whole lot more coming up. For Ken Stout and for Mark Schrader, I'm Scott Douglas going to SoCal because Anaheim is next live on speed. Don't go away.